70s as five police officers were killed by bandits in Elwak area in Mandera that also left 20 Al-Shabaab militants killed, eight National Police Service officers injured and two weapons recovered. We cannot have mercy on people who are killing our security officers, killing innocent people. Mimi naomba tu maombi na subira kidogo, dawanyorosha. Na hii Kenya tutasavisha hii Kenya. It's either Kenya ama bandits. Kati ya inchi ya Kenya na magaidi nani ataondoka kwa njia? Sini magaidi? Pass. Askari wetu musiwe na uruma na hao watu. Wameua afisa wetu watano pale Lwak. Na mimi narudi huko. Nikajiunge na ofisa wetu ambao wako kazi pale. Sawa so, si kukaa na Nairobi na kuacha wanaangamia pale peke yao. Hata hii Trukana South Game Reserve. Mimi nitaingia huko na officers wangu huko ndani. Kendiki further said that they'll issue a gazette notice that will see the Turkana South Game Reserve declared a crime scene and security operations on. We will only allow wild animals and the Kenya Wildlife Service officers inside Turkana South Game Reserve. Period. Usiende pale ati ni umeenda kutafuta nyazi, si umeenda kutafuta nini. Safari hii tunaenda kuweka mikakati ya kisheria kufanya ile mahali scene of crime. Na kama wewe sio afisa wa usalama, wewe sio mlinda wanyama pori na wewe sio mnyama wa pori, uondoke pale until further notice. Kwa hivyo tutatangaza hiyo katika muda mchache ujao. We will comb that area, we'll seal it off and conduct a thorough security operation in that area. Meanwhile, two police officers have been arrested following the loss of firearms and bullets in Wajia County. And Deputy President Rukadi Kishaga said that the government will implement the T-Act 2020 Monday to help farmers as they seek amendments to the act. Speaking during the National Tea Conference in Kericho, he said that the government will ensure 100% compliance with the law when enforcing the act. I want to appreciate Senator Chariot in a very special way for his efforts in pushing the Tea Act. Lakini bada ya ye hiyo sheria haija tekelezwa, imelaliwa, sindio? Because the government that was there was not keen. Sheria hiko, nzuri, inaweza okua mkulima. Lakini the implementation, some people are still doing things the way they were doing before the enactment of the T Act. As mere leaders have said that all is said for today's Sabasaba rally that will be held across the country. Nairobi Audience Party Chairperson Georgia Lado says the main rally will be held at Kamukunji Ground elsewhere. Former Laikipia Governor Ndiritu Muridi has urged Kenyans who feel burdened by the cost of living to be part of the rallies. Wa Kenya wenzangu, kokote ulipo katika jamhuri yetu ya Kenya. Kama wewe wasikia uchungu wa bei gali ya maisha, Kama unasikia uchungu wa mafuta petroli unayolipa bei gali. Kama unasikia uchungu wa chakula kuwa bei gali. Wewe siku ya saba saba jitokeze mahali huko na upige kelele hapo. Various civil society groups have also come out to say that they'll take part in the protest. Here is activist Boniface Okach. Revolutionaries as well as patriotic Kenyans urge Kenyans to turn out in large numbers. It is the duty of today's generation to realize that they are the bridge between our forefathers, past generation, and our children's children, future generation. And that the gap in access to justice and freedom across generations can only be bridged through relentless struggle. For our failure to do so means that our children's children will go through the same repression and humiliation that our forefathers underwent. Today is Sabah Sabah Day and the demonstrations have been called by Azmi, One Kenya Coalition Party. We will be following up these and we will be bringing you the very latest in our subsequent news bulletin. Now, Mbakasi East Member of Parliament Babu Winners asked the court to acquit him of the criminal charge he is facing. The legislator who, f- who was found to have a case to answer in the matter where he is charged with misuse of firearm. We know says that the prosecution has failed to prove its case beyond any reasonable doubt, adding that none of the prosecution witnesses, including the victim DJ Wolf, has been able to establish that he had his firearm at the day of the incident. And the Bungoma County government has been urged to employ more agricultural extension officers as one of the ways to strengthen coffee farming in the area. Speaking in Chwele, new KPCU boss Charles Mutili said most of the farmers do not have knowledge about coffee farming, which he says continues to be the reason behind poor harvest. Some farmers have, however, criticized political leaders for failing to protect the interests of farmers. I'm Dennis Asada. Good morning.
The following takes place from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every weekday on Spice FM. Revenge is for children. Mm. It's for kids. When you grow up, you realize the best revenge you, you can take on somebody is to ignore them. Now I'm just new in politics. Mm. It is not everybody's cup of tea. That's why some people come in one term and that's it for them. Political parties in this country do not have ideologies, whether luring or otherwise. And that is the effect of corruption. Any time an offense occurs anywhere in the country, it is the job of the Inspector General to look into it. Whether it's corruption, whether it's murder, whether it's betting, that is his job. If we have chosen to be a corrupt nation, then we produce corrupt leaders. Everything then becomes chaotic that you cannot be able to change a nation. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. This is one of the hottest show that we can ever miss in the morning. And it's a show that really gives a real situation in the Situation Room. Pleasure to be here. Mm. Thank you guys so much. Do that. Nice meeting you. Yes. Even beautiful in uh, person more than in <laughs> photos. Say that again. <laughs> Corrector is like pregnancy. You cannot hide it. You know, people are hiding here and there, you know. But after two, three months, five months, now you just. Oh. Yes. So that is why the attitude that you are showing us, <laughs> you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> It's like what my grandmother would say, mm. cannot pickpocket a naked man. <laughs> How's that? It's communal, isn't it? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. Welcome to Friday. Um, a little bit is starting to build up in different parts of the city. There's going to be some outbound traffic today. We already know this. There's movement coming off of Jogo Road, getting out into the CBD. And we'll also see some on Landy's Road right about now. Coming out of Westlands, not too bad. Likely to be, you know, manageable. At least for now. Into the CBD is probably where we'll see the most of it. It looks good though for now. Let's see if we can get Friday to act right in terms of traffic. Talk to us on Spice of MKE on Twitter as we attempt to keep things moving this Friday. One hundred two point five Spice FM, Kisumu. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom. Wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room. At nine minutes after six o'clock, welcome to Friday. Good morning, and how are you doing? It is seven seven twenty three, Saba Saba seven seven. Can you say seven seven? Good morning, and how are you doing? Hope everything is well in your neck of the woods, and people, you know, trickling in. Just come. It's okay. Kuja too. What is it? Your phone. Okay. Just keep coming. Don't worry. Somebody wants to cry on this cold Friday morning. It's raining. It's pouring. The old man is snoring. It's actually raining this morning. But this is good. This is a good thing. The weather is telling us that we are alive. So, bonjour, bonjour. Como ça va? Como ça va? Como ça va? Lakini? Lakini ni meacha simu kwa gari. Kwa gari even. Eh. Sasa unajua siyezi survive. Bila? Sasa unataka aje? Sasa bila natafanya. Chani na kachukua simu. Hapa na kaa chini mtu atakusaidia. Ah ah. Leta kifunguo. Ah ah. Sasa yeye anaweza toka. Mhm. Wewe uweze toka. Mhm. Siti yeye chak, siti akae chini. Mhm. Alafu, siti. Como ça va? Kaa chini. Ça va bien. Ça va bien. Yes. Okay. C'est bon, c'est bien. Kaa chini, kaa chini siti. Hey! 
Jesus. Jesus. Is this why you wanted me to sit down in such a hurry? Buana. Watch a what, let's call your phone. Uh, if somebody strange uh, picks up the phone, the phone is in the car. Two problems and worries. How are you? So it's funny, Evi. Eh? So it's in the evening. Come. It's the septième de la mois de juillet. Hmm. Uh huh. Mille There you go. Oui. <laughs> oui. Mm. C'est mm. très bon. Oui, non, Aujourd'hui. 2023, mm. sorry. 2023. Aujourd'hui. Aujourd'hui. Yes. Mm. Voulez-vous. Il est. Mm. Ouais. Okay. Mm. This man is not thinking because he's. Et moi, <laughs> mes phones, elle est dedans dans le cas. <laughs> Voiture. Ouais. Mm. Ouais. Je vais le laisser mon phone. <laughs> <laughs> What is Lele? J'ai eu. Va va voum. Moi, va va voum. J'ai vu. Va go. Allez. Va va voum. Va va voum. Ça va. Let me set these things up. Alafu Edna at a fanya nanaye uki fanya traffic. Alafu Mimi. Weather. Weather si ya kwanza si ya. Let me tell what's happening. What are we discussing today? Let me tell you what we're discussing. 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 Let me tell you what we're discussing.
cloudy conditions in Nairobi. Highs of 17 and lows of 10 today. It's cloudy at 15 in Nakuru. Highs of 22 and lows of 12. We'll see lows of 12 in a mostly cloudy Nyeri at 13. Going to highs of 17. 20 will be the high Friday in a cloudy Eldoret at 14 currently. Going to lows of 13. It's mostly cloudy at 23. In Mombasa, highs of 28 and lows of 23. 24 will be the m- the low in a cloudy Malindi, currently at 25, going to highs of 28. It's cloudy at 19 in Kisumu, highs of 27 and lows of 18. And cloudy at 18 in Kakamega, with highs of 26, we'll see lows of 15. Let's look out into Kampala, where it's cloudy at 19, highs of 25 and lows of 18. And Dar es Salaam is cloudy at 23, with sea highs of 29 and lows of 21. It's clear in Johannesburg at 8, highs of 17 and lows of 6, while partly cloudy at 26 in Lagos with highs of 30 and lows of 25. It's clear in Kinshasa at 21, highs of 32, back down to lows of 21 and at 34, Friday afternoon is sunny in Beijing, highs of 37 and lows of 24. It's cloudy at 16 in Paris, highs of 31 today. And we'll see highs of 28 in a mostly cloudy London at 14. Clear skies Thursday night in New York coming into Friday. Highs of 32 and lows of 22. up your life mature intelligent talk every morning spice up yourself mornings done right 94.4 spice uh, it's 17 minutes after six o'clock how about we say hello to you for the folks who have joined us this morning uh-huh. If the computer will do like that, I'll talk to you in a minute. But for now, all right. Um, Sir George Gashoiri is tuning from Manchester this morning and says, Good morning. Another wonderful day to sit back and enjoy the conversation. James Wangi, good morning to you. Cyrus Kalasinga, good morning, spices. You miss you are a spice, city. You are a spice. Um, <clears throat> Okay, but whose legs are those crisscrossing your background? Where? Somebody's legs. Ish. Okay, Maybe so. that wasn't the message wasn't meant for you. <laughs> no, I was meant for all of you. Can I read the message in its entirety? Legs crisscrossing. Good morning, spices. You guys are just amazing. Your presentation is always up close and candid. I like it. I love it. But whose legs are those crisscrossing your background? This is Kalasinga in Eldoret. Maybe there was somebody walking by. Maybe. After all, you know who we are. We are in an open space, eh? Might be. It's possible. Um, good morning. Listening from the great Minneapolis. That's Davis. Bosida Kenyatta says he's listening in from Kenyananda. There's such a place. Kenyanada. Or Kenyada. What are those? He says Kenyanada. Okay. All right. Okay. <coughs> Penny Gishuki says, good morning. Penny listening from Fidegua. <laughs> there are people who actually live there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. She says good morning to you. COB yesterday challenged every Kenyan to seek accountability from the elected leaders. Yes, COB not being close of business, but the control of budget. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we're a gullible nation with an appetite of greed and corruption at the front seat. And that's Toti Bishop, who has a lot to say this morning. Mm-hmm. Good morning, Friday. Saba Saba, the trio th- streaming live from the UAE. Jerry Lewis says good morning. Good morning. I like the energy today. Well, good morning. Sir George says today we are learning French. We oui, we. Oui. Toutes oui, les choses oui, oui. en français aujourd'hui. Oui, 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 oui. And then Africana decided to, you know, spunk things up a little bit and says, Guten Morgen from Doha. Good morning. Looking forward to today's conversation. This is Eric Kumba from Washington, D.C. Deep State says he's the newest bachelor to hit the market. <laughs> what do you say? Okay. He says, anger as rare and as visible as Edna's face. Well, well. <coughs> That is not seen. Mm, Not (laughs) seen, but we know you are there. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Caroline Martin, franchement, le nouveau de français um, est du et merveilleux. I'm not quite sure. Bravo. Oui, oui. Wait, c'est. I feel (laughs) somebody's feeling. Where did I feeling go? I feel it will be another steam blowing session. Uh-huh. Good morning from the Truth Seeker, Foundation of Wisdom and the Provocateur. Good morning to you, Isaac Babji. Leonard Kamau says tuning in from Pangani. Hi, Nduciti and Eric from Nanyuki, Laikipia County, Kenya Sunshine State. Is it? 
Sunshine said. Sunshine, sunshine. Good morning, Nella. Good morning to you. Good morning. Another day to enjoy the best morning show. Indeed, Karibu Sana. Good morning from Germany. Good morning, George. How are you? Ruto Mengwa says, good morning, good people. I listen to you before my lectures. How about that? Good morning, everybody from Houston. It rained here, so it's a little bit cooler. Yeah, we hear the Texas summer was quite hot. Now, Gladys Waithaka says, Eric, hmm? you've behaved like that husband who left the phone at home without a password and fears the wife will go through it. Why? <laughs> oh, Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning from Melbourne, Australia. Charles Whiter says, it's your birthday. Well, how about that, Charles? Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Charlie. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Voila, voila. Yeah, you yo. see everybody there? Dano, Kenovia, Engineer Kelvin, everybody who's online today. Karibuni Sana. Thank you for joining us. Bas, bas. City. Fanya mm -hmm. namna hiyo. He yeah. who is to be hanged can insult the Pasha. He. Who is to be hanged? Can insult he who is the Pasha. Who's the Pasha? You tell me. Who is the Pasha? The one who's doing the hanging. Now, Pasha kicks the bucket. It has nothing to do with Pasha. With the with. Me and my people pronouncing. It's not one of those moments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it has, it has, it has, this is not mother tongue influence. Uh -uh. Okay. Uh. Just so that you understand. Uh. Yes. This is just the Pasha. Yes. From what I've seen in those um, Arabian and Persian sides. The Pasha. So one of high ranking. Uh, you know, uh, senior, a senior advisor yeah. to Yani, the boss. Yes. Advisor like this, mm -hmm. minister like this, high ranking official, somebody who is known. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, this is a, like a proverb from the past. Mm -hmm. You insult such a person at the risk of your life. Quisha. Or at the risk of your neck, to be more precise. Mm -hmm. But if you're already, you, your neck is already in the dock and it's going. Uh, now you, now you he'll just kick you the bucket. Yeah. The, you can tell the person. You have nothing to, fear. to lose. To tell him, Pasha, mm -hmm. you, go suck a lemon. Mm -hmm. Quisha. What do what are you going to do? Utaniwa. Yes. <laughs> there are people who got there before you. Utaniwa. So, <laughs> or get in line. In case I don't die with the first seven, you can take your turn now. Okay. I want to make this thing known to the world. Make because it known. Mama, where I have reached, I think the world is the one who's supposed to help me. Mm. Two years ago, yes. one Eric Latif mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. promised me in the presence of one city Muga mm -hmm. that he would buy ice cream for me. Mm -hmm. Me, me. Ice cream. Mm hmm Till today, July seventh, mm. I have not received ice cream. I've not even seen, I've not even seen uh, Jalili Yamvua. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. So I've brought. When it was the ice cream to come? What do you mean? Ice cream in this cold weather. <laughs> That's yeah? not the point. When was the ice cream to come? Now. Huh? At that time, it was now. Okay. So now passed. No, I promise. What are you on about? Next. I'm on about ice cream. What are you on about? Bring my ice cream. Yeah? Well, we're on a Camarine Stadium. What? We're on a Camarine Stadium. What is that? I'm a water stadium. <laughs> What's that have yeah? to do with anything? See, that's why we're going to celebrate ice cream. Si kusema gas ni mutungi. Okay. I said, I'll show you where they sell ice cream. But Have I not shown you where too. they sell ice cream? Even when we went to Kilifi, he said, hey, gelato. And I showed you. There you go. City, stop pretending and ah, yeah. be quiet. Let's move on. Headlines. Ruto's radical CBC <laughs> shake <laughs> New education reforms, <laughs> proposals seen by the standard reveal drastic changes, including uh, a competency-based curriculum, and we'll see a return of national exams, sky-high cost of implementing system and scrapping of national schools, uh, even as TSE's powers are eroded with the ministry assuming quality assurance function. We'll look at this story in detail, but just so you know, shake up. Finally. <clears throat> Parts of that report are out. It's not been made public in full, but okay. Inside today's Azimio Saba Saba protests, um, we're looking at the details of that as well. The politics of betrayal is something that's carried on the front page of the nation. 
um, we have no eternal allies and we have no perpetual enemies. Our interests are eternal and perpetual. Popular songs in Swahili through the years is something that's being looked at as we celebrate World Language Day. Um, we'll implement tea laws from next week, says DP Gashagwa. Osinde was killed and dumped. Rather, let's start again. Osinde was killed at home and then dumped in the river, according to detectives. This is former Treasury official Tom Mokaya Osinde, who was killed in his uh, Ngata estate in Nakuru County. According to investigators, mm -hmm. that's what they're telling us. Twitter rival Threads crosses 10 million users within hours of its launch. <laughs> uh, it's a new thing. CT, just before you joined Erasmus, they have brought another one. What is it called? Threads. Okay. It's called Threads. It's like it, it Twitter. It's the same thing as... Uh, it's like Twitter, but you know... It's, it's, is it closer to Twitter or TikTok? It's closer to Twitter. You, you just jumped on TikTok, didn't you? Mm. They brought another one to just confuse you just a little bit okay. more. Do you know how long it took me to understand WhatsApp? <laughs> <laughs> and even still. <laughs> All right. Another loan. Now you'll thread it together. <clears throat> now you'll thread them together. <laughs> Voila. Mm -hmm. Kenya bags 70 billion shillings loan as World Bank backs digital taxes. Uh, yeah. So, you know, while you're drowning, have some more money. Expensive money. Like that, like that. Like that, like that. I tell you what's in the business daily. Please do. The business daily. Naiva's founders eye 5.8 billion shillings as foreigners seize control. The family of Peter Mokuha Kago, the founder of Naivas, is set to sell an extra 11% stake in the company for an estimated 5.8 billion shillings in a deal that will see foreign investors take controlling ownership of Kenya's largest supermarket chain. This will be the third time the Mokuhas will be selling their shares in Naivas, which has become an investor's magnet on the back of profitability and market share growth. The latest proposed deal has been disclosed by Maurit Mauritian conglomerate IBL Group, which is part of a consortium that bought a combined 40% stake in Naivas last year for 21.4 billion shillings at current exchange rates. The Mokuha family just last year made 21.4 billion shillings. <laughs> They are just about to make another 5.8 billion shillings. <laughs> These guys should run the government. <laughs> hey, smaller headline here. Public officers to declare spouses' income assets in graft purge. You work in the public office, you now become public property. Public officers will disclose all their spouses, their income and assets alongside their dependent children in their wealth declaration forms, if a proposed law that seeks to manage conflict of interest in public office is approved, <laughs> who will approve it? The Conflict of Interest Bill 2023 also requires public officers to disclose the occupation of their spouse or spouses, income and type of income, financial assets held, debtors, intellectual properties and creditors. This can be looked at in two ways. One, you see the way the public officers go and they start... Because this is a self-declaration without necessarily attaching evidence. Just go and say, I've got three spouses and these are their incomes. So whenever people come and ask you where, where you got the, in, the wealth from, you say, but I told you, my spouse makes X amount. <laughs> this is all family wealth. Hi, ticker headlines, how heavy borrowing is crowding private sector out of debt market where the World Bank is cautioning the Kenyan government of a persistent crowding out of the private sector from the local debt market due to heavy borrowing from the domestic market. They don't want us to, to, to borrow domestically. We should go to them. A new 70 billion shilling syndicated loan eases Kenya's forex wars. We have received some 70 billion shilling syndicated loan that uh, Kenya has con secured from a consortium of international lenders, effectively rolling over external debt repayments of a similar margin that are due this month. That has relieved CBK's heavy, heavy, heavy burden. Today is Friday, so what do we also have? The Nairobi. <coughs> I tell you what's on the Nairobi. Number City will tell us. City should tell us. Is that what you're looking at? No, I'm looking at the star. Okay, let me then tell you the Nairobi quick, <coughs> quick, quick, <coughs> quick, quick, quick. <coughs> the Nairobi is looking at the Kenya Demographic and Health Survey whose results were released earlier this week. Marriage crisis as secret affairs hit homes. And the headline, the rise of Mpango Wakando nation. The demographic survey indicates that married women prefer unprotected sex and that they will cheat depending on how much money they have. The more money, the higher the likelihood. 
killers on the prowl. Kenyans exposed as community policing strategy stalls. And then there's another headline here, Wash Wash, how Tory boys are minting millions from rich single women. They also tell a story of uh, uh, the inter an interview with Bob Collimo's widow, Waboi, who says, I will keep Bob's jazz legacy going. So many other stories in the Nairobi <coughs> city. Yes. What there? Star. Mm -hmm. She has a column. Mm. No, it's not really a column. It's a pull out more or less in, on page 10. Mm. Why mm. Kenya Kwanzaa foray into Luo land is a scheme doomed to fail miserably. Yeah. That, is the, that is the opinion that is being discussed on page 10. Mm -hmm. Yes. I wonder, I really wonder whether this is actually true or not. I wonder. <laughs> right. Raila plots CBD march during Saba Saba rally. March in the CBD? I am reading what has been written here. Yeah. Oh. Azimila Umoja on Thursday made a last call for supporters to throng the historic Amkunji grounds for what it termed as a launch of the third revolution. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Opposition leaders, MPs led by Nairobi ODM chairman George Alado said it was all set for the Saba Saba rally. Alrighty. I was tortured by cops warehouse owner tells MPs. Okay. There's a gentleman called Peter Mwangi. He collapsed when he was shown the empty thicker stores by KRA and DC officers. Okay. The owner of the warehouse from which 20,000 bags of condemned sugar disappeared uh. broke down as he was telling MPs because MPs told him, come tell us your warehouse, 20,000 bags of sugar had been condemned. Suddenly, he's gone there. No sugar. What? Where? Collapse, he collapsed. Torture. Police. Him. Torture. Right. Ah. That's him. So he says. So at what point did he collapse? With the MPs or the first time he went and opened the doors of, the, of his store and found? When he opened. Empty. Uh, empty. When he opened the doors and found empty. That one. Okay. Oh, yeah. So don't you feel sorry for something? He said he was storing it so that mm. up until and when it was converted into ethanol. Mm. That's what he was doing, just storing it. Then somebody decided to go and steal somebody it. Somebody disappeared it. Now then, the right, the right reaction is to faint. Yeah. Uh, custard apples change Moranga's farmer's fortunes. This custard is apples? Yes, yes, this is a story of a gentleman called Frederick Yanjui. Uh. What was the truck driver. Uh. And... Uh, this long distance driving thing and everything, after a while he decided, you know, perhaps he should change the way he does his business. And go into farming. And go into farming, and he did. Uh -huh. Then bang in the middle, bloated. Some lawyers say Musalia's job, 51 PS, is not contemplated in law. It's discussed. The discussion goes back to the discussions about what the, uh, the experts who uh, went about drafting the BOMA draft, as they call it, what they envisioned for the executive. Mm -hmm. Spotlight on size of Ruto's executive after CAS verdict. Of course, uh, yeah, th this discussion is going to go on and it's going to go on and it's going to go on. But sometimes I even marvel and I wonder, yes, it, it must go on. Mm -hmm. We must look at the constitution. But what is it that we're actually discussing? The theories of how this should be done mm -hmm. or the practicalities? Because I wonder if the shoe was in the other foot, how exactly would it look like? So... Is it a time for us to... Same size, same yes, uh, model of shoes, yes, just yes. a different color. Yes, exactly. Okay. If we are to have this discussion, are we having it on the basis that something wrong is being done, mm. the constitution is being flouted, or it is someone else doing it, and because it is someone else, it is wrong. If someone else was doing it, they do not be wrong. I mean, mm. what is the basis of this particular discussion? Because it's a never-ending discussion. Interesting question. Yes. Tell us about traffic, shall you? Ah, yeah. Sijali ice cream. Uh, ice cream. Uh, the Today. day you'll have that ice cream, you'll appreciate fact, he told me the about long way. There's one called Mango Trickle. Mm. Stop it. I'm just giving We've you We've been working mission. with my brother on how to actually <laughs> give you this ice cream. <laughs> really? You yes. Guys. Mango. Tunapanga mikakati. Mm. Na tumesha ja, tumejadiliana. Na, tume na tumekubaliana. <laughs> na tumesema. Tutakupatia. Mm. 
na tutahakikisha mm. kwamba umeipata <laughs> kufikia mwezi wa tisa mm. na haitapita hiyo mwezi mm. utakula ice cream sawa <laughs> this is the situation room the only way to start your day Ava brother he was a pilot he was laid off he came to a policeman he messed up he went from yeah. a pilot to a policeman exactly he stole a jet yeah that's in fact you should be lucky he was not caught marshal the spice drive <laughs> the big hair and the biggest hits from the best decade <laughs> Indeed, it's all about hashtag Spice Drive hashtag Quatch K W A C H three to seven in the PM. The Spice Drive only on ninety four point four Spice okay, FM Nairobi. A little bit on the Thika Super Highway coming then into town. Um, are you on James Gishuru? You should be fine as you get towards Waikiki. Not too much action happening there on the northern bypass. Trickles of traffic now trying to get onto Kiambu Road, and we'll see some of that getting towards Wangari Maathai Way. Outbound traffic on the Thika Super Highway is starting to simmer. And we're also seeing the same thing on uh, Waiaki Way. Outbound doing the business. You're fine on North Airport Road that's coming in from Cabanas out towards Mbakasi and then through towards the Eastern Bypass. So not much in terms of movement this morning. Everything is manageable, at least for now. We've seen a uh, sprinkle coming down. <laughs> In some parts of roads will be slippery, clouds will be low, mist will be heavy. Be careful, whatever it is. Let's see how this pans out in about half hour or so. Talk to us on Spice FM KE on Twitter. up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. With an in-depth coverage on what is being called Ruto's Radical CBC Shake-Up um, on page 6, 7, 8 and 9 of the standard. Let's look at some of the key points of what was announced or rather, you know, um, the preview of this number one the categorization of schools it's going to be the end of national extra county county and sub county category of schools schools will be classified based on their pathways which is stem um social sciences and sports those three okay. so schools will be known by what they offer and not their categorization in terms of national through towards sub county so for example it'll be called alliance sports school or alliance school of science it can't be of science. Alliance that School of STEM. Mm, that one can't be of STEM. Okay. Sports or jokes. I know what you're doing. The uh, Lenana School of Social Sciences. Okay. Such things. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> New funding model. This is what it looks like. Capitation has been reviewed and a flat rate per student introduced for all schools regardless of the population. Mm. Pre-primary will get 1,170 per student. Primary will get 2,237 per student. Junior secondary will get 15,544 shillings. Senior secondary, 19,628. And special needs, which we told, no, don't call it special needs, call it something else. Mm. Um, we're looking at... Uh, Children with dis learners with disabilities will get 18,000 each. Subject reduction. Fewer subjects for learners in lower primary. They will go from 8 to 7. Upper primary from 10 to 8. Junior secondary from 12 to 9. And only 7 subjects in senior secondary school. Mm. Quality assurance. The TSC will now be stripped of its quality assurance mandate. Um, responsible officers to be moved to the Ministry of Education. Mm. TSC to oversee the remuneration of pre-primary teachers previously done by county governments. We saw the SRC come in when it came to the remuneration of um, ECD teachers and such. So now they're saying this will be moved and uh, um, the TSC now will handle <coughs> that. So mm. TSC will handle categories of um, compensation, remuneration across board. Mm. Um, all teachers will undergo mandatory retraining on CBC. Everybody will go through it. Nothing like, oh, I, I think I'm okay. No, you will do it. 70% mm. of senior secondary. Um, okay, so now we're looking at there will be more 
weight on a final examination. 70% of the senior secondary uh, final score will be from the final exam and 30% will be from school-based assessments. 60% from junior secondary, 60% of the final exams and 40% from school-based assessments. That is what is going to happen in um, junior secondary. Mm -hmm. Let's look at a little bit more in terms of then what will happen if this proposed raft of measures actually comes into place. I want to read a quote from the president. It was interesting that he said, the transition to CBC is a big plus and there could have been some missteps in the process. Maybe we could have taken an extra year or two to ensure we get teachers and other stakeholders on board. Mm. But now, <clears throat> that is water under the bridge. You get what you get and we're going to go with it, essentially, is what he has said. Mm. All right. Um, let's just look at a little bit more on that. Um, the headline says that the president's team leans on reducing subjects and there will be a return to national exams. Mm -hmm. So um, learners under the CBC would still scramble for high scores in national examinations, retaining the crisis that the shift from 844 sought to cure. The good news, however, is that the number of subjects studied under CBC would be reduced to ease the learning's burden, uh, which has elicited uproar amongst parents and some education stakeholders, saying that the weight load is just too much. Um, Twelve subjects in, te in primary school does not make sense. Mingy. These recommendations are, the president, are in the Presidential Working Party on Education Reform's draft report. It is not final or cast in stone. If the draft recommendations by the education reforms teams are adopted in the final report, initial proposals that school-based assessments constitute 60%, with only 40% for national examinations would be reversed. Mm -hmm. So it would go... 40, 60. Okay. Primary school learners will have to fight for 60% in national examinations administered in grade 8. In, sorry, in grade 9. The learners will score a maximum of 40% in school-based assessments, effectively reversing an initial plan to ease pressure on national examinations under the CBC. So there are a number of things that are happening. If we can look also at what they say for university, um, candidates qualified for degree administration, number of students with C plus and above that applied looking at these numbers and they're saying um, what we're going to do is uh, increase the fees at the university level um, so that they has to, th what they're suggesting is that there has to be other sources of funding for university students to attend university and not have all of that come from from government from government so people have got to fund themselves and then universities have got to work out um, ways of having you know, foundation Absolutely. and such. One of the big ticket items in this draft report is that mm. national schools will be scrapped. Um, we are not going to have this categorization if this draft uh, proposal is adopted. Uh, national schools, this thing of business, everybody's fighting. F 400 people are fighting, rather 5,000 people are fighting for 400 slots. It's not going to happen anymore. Mm. You will go where you will go and it will be based on subject area of STEM, sports, and, uh, Without talking about how you're going to equalize those schools. Mm. Because the whole thing that the problem is not the fact that uh, one school is called a national school and the other one is called an extra county school. It is what follows ab it. Absolutely. And uh, if we are not talking about how you're going to ensure equity, mm. how we'll ensure that Kimana Girls Secondary School is the same as the Lions Girls High School. In terms of facilities, in terms of the infrastructure, the teachers who go there. Absolutely. If we are not making sure that Kimana girls can get the same qualified teachers, the same level of experience as those ones teaching at Alliance Girls and Mary Hill Girls, then we're not helping. It's true because you know what the, the, the thing is. You can call Alliance, whatever you want to call it. Call you can even reverse and call same. Kimana Secondary Kimana Girls Secondary School National. You can. The thing is that when the, the, the status that they have acquired over time, it invites a particular amount and stature of agency yeah. that you have teachers who will endear themselves already to that. People are fighting to be in positions of teaching there. So how are you going to make sure that it doesn't matter where you are, mm. that it's going to be okay for any teacher worth their salt to say, I want to go and teach at Kimana mm. with the same desire that I want to go and teach at this STEM school. Yeah. How are you going to be able to do that? You can decategorize, that's fine. But it's an entire process that has to take place. Infrastructure has to be available at each and every one of these schools, even after you've decategorized. Facilities have to be available at each and every one of them because the fact of the matter is, if there's a particular head teacher we like CT and he's in this school, we will go there. Yeah. The competition will still be very, very stiff. 
to go to certain schools unless you make sure that across board facilities are available, agency for teachers available, yep. people who will apply in uh, apply their very best at one institution will do it at another institution. Yep. Can we ensure that? <laughs> you know, you know, it's, it's really very strange. The um, the concept of private schools in a time gone by, yeah? many private schools in towns mm. were nestled in the middle of town in a building. Yep. They were not some swanky academy. Mm -mm. They were swanky academies, but they were very few. Yep. They were former schools that um, the colonialists had set up for their children. Mm. Uh, and one found them, very many of them were in the Rift Valley, some mm. in central Kenya. That's precisely where they were. Mm. Now, when what was a school that was set up for business, and essentially it was not an expensive institution, it was an institution that somebody could afford to go to. Mm. What was of interest is very many people went to these private schools and managed to do well. Yet, to save money, many of these schools would employ school leavers. Mm. There'd be one or two graduate teachers, literally one or two. But the bulk of the other teachers were people who had finished from six mm. and they taught. People still did well. They, this discussion about education mm. is one that we cannot stop. What we can do is continue highlighting the missteps along the way and how best those missteps can actually be rectified because mm. they can be rectified. If we're discussing and talking about a, a time and a situation when the problems we're now encountering di didn't exist in the education system, and we could argue there's more information available to us readily right now as we speak. We've been independent for long enough for us to have collated the errors that were made and the steps that we must take. Yeah. But the idea of running a school system simply by talking about it and yet not ensuring that what needs to be done is actually done. That one, it's a, it's a zero-sum game. No. And the worst, the worst thing, the thing that is most disturbing is that you are condemning an entire generation. Yeah. Condemning completely yeah. to mediocrity. Yeah. The opportunity and the chances that are available, you are the one who's extinguishing them. And these children will be handicapped educationally because of these missteps. Because while the CBC is playing hop, step and jump, those who are in these private schools are getting on with the education. Moving yeah. ahead swiftly. Yes. Yes, yes. No yes. hitch, no hindrance, nothing. How can you not pay heed to the public institutions that house the vast majority of our children. Yeah. Vast majority. So what are you saying? What is the plan and what do you envision for this vast majority? What exactly are you saying? Because you are saying something. But more importantly, what do you think you're setting in motion? Yeah. You know, every once in a while I bump into someone who tells me that they come from uh, Nakuru. Mm -hmm. Like Kagushi and I, we chit chat because we, we, we're both from Nakuru. I grew up Philip Kagushia of yes. corruption. Yes. Uh -huh. He's mm. a Nakuru boy. Mm. Okay. There's something about Nakuru. Mm. You talk to someone who was from Nakuru, believe me, there's a certain camaraderie that, that, that you acquire. Because it was a very peaceful, quiet town and you get you got to know each other. Mm. Okay. There are schools people went to when I meet them, they tell me, and I'm thinking, I'm asking well, that school, where was it exactly? And then he explains the area. I said, Oh near that Langa Langa place, blah 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 blah. Uh, and you and you get talking. You were not handicapped because you went to a school that bordered Naivasha. No, 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 no. You got your education. Now it was up to you to decide what you're going to do with it. Mm. You were taught because teachers were there, the facilities were available. Yeah. But instead of building new facilities as the population increased, you just stuffed children into this into the school. same, same facilities. Yes. So into it was overrun. Same, same. And when it overran, it deteriorated. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. I'm uh, waiting for that report to actually see what they're talking yeah, about. Indeed. Improvement of infrastructure across boards to ensure equity. You know, something big is happening. We don't actually talk much about sports and sports activities that are taking place Eric, in the before country. Before you continue with that, can yeah. I just pause for a second? Pause. Can this committee commission task, uh, task force, force working party, working party <laughs> okay? Mm. Can they tell us or can they take the time to look at other reports that have been written about this education in this country? 
which were never implemented. One would only hope. Yes, so that they don't repeat what was already said by other people and was not done. Mm. Okay? Is it possible? Because there have been many, 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 many of these task forces doing this very, very, very same thing. One would only hope anyway, that what they've done is, uh, for all those six months is, among others, consume other reports. Please, continue. Higher. We know of the World Athletics Championships, right? Yes. And we actually wait for them and we... And, uh, Olympics, World Athletics Championships, we wait for them. This year, where are they taking place? Is it this year or next year? It's next year. In Budapest, yes. Hungary. Now, we usually cheer our Kenyan teams. But you know where the World Athletics actually happens? It's here in Nyao Stadium. Mm. For example, the national trials for the 2023, it's this year, 2023 Budapest World Championships happening today and tomorrow at the Nyao National Stadium are being staged under strict conditions. Now, imagine all the big athletes that Kenya has who are hoping to become <laughs> world champions have to meet at Nyao National Stadium, compete to get the ticket. Now that tells you that this is where the championships are taking place. If you think about <laughs> steeple chase, if you think about 1500 meters, 3000 meters steeple chase, 5000 meters, 10000 meters, uh, if you think about the relays, uh, this is where the championships are taking place. But do you hear about it? No. Because I think this is where now today and tomorrow Nyao National Stadium should be packed to the rafters. It should people be. actually watching the world championships because the trials in Kenya let me tell you, Lord Sebastian Coe mm. once said, with regards to this middle distance running, he said, with these Kenyans, you can't predict. Mm. Because there'll be some youngster who nobody has heard of. <laughs> yeah. And who doesn't seem to understand that there are rules that apply to this. And unknown to everyone, this fellow will just spring up and be, lo and behold, he will take charge and control. Now, this is me paraphrasing. Mm. The entire field. Uh, how right he was. Imagine. Because for everyone who's a star, there are 10 others waiting. There are others. And they're training harder than you. Yep. It's true. So, please, if you can make time with the man, the man of the Sabasabo and everything, just go to Nyaya National Stadium today. So today, from 11 a.m., uh, we have the championships taking place. And then from 1 p.m., 10,000 meters men's final is at 1 p.m., 100 uh, meters men's semifinal Manyala at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. again, javelin women. 5,000 meters women's final. <laughs> Who just broke the world record? Faith Kipiegon. Yeah, you think that she'd come here and just run like that and she'd be there. What? She will face stiff competition. Mm -hmm. today. Very stiff competition. 5,000 meters women's final. 2.20 p.m. today. 400 meters men and women. Today, 800 meters men semifinal. Uh, 4 by 400 meters relay mixed. And then tomorrow, you have the 10,000 meters women's final, 100 meters women's final, 100 meters men's final, 5,000 meters men's final, 400 meters women's final, 1,500 meters again, Faith Kip Jagon, women's final, uh, 1,500 meters men, Tipple Chiefs men, women. Tomorrow, Saturday is just finals, finals, finals. Today is a semis. Those two days. Ay, 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 ay. My friend. Yeah. You know, I've actually had an occasion to actually witness this mm -hmm. uh, it's heart lifting Aye. it's exciting it's really really exciting mm. this should be marked ak athletics kenya should actually be marketing this very very well have an entire so everybody knows this is where the trials are taking place come and see today is the day come yes so people can plan and go and go it's true. Mm -hmm. So you know the person who's an emerged winner here, you know they are likely going to be the world champion, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just watching them. Those three are the ones, those four are the ones who are going to represent Kenya. Gold among mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Who is it likely to be? No, the way Faith was running. Come on, Hey. Hey. City. Tell us. I am going to tell you a story. Mm. Did we look at the headlines story, of the nation? Story, oh. mm. Yes. Yes. I want to go over not the betrayal of politics. Mm. Nope. That is not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the story on page three. 
Language of love, popular songs in Swahili through the decades. Where, where? This is what has got my interest. <laughs> Starting with Malaika, Fadir Williams, mm -hmm. Equator Records, 1963. That's mm -hmm. when it was recorded? Yep. Where? Vintage. Uh -huh. Nakupenda Malaika. Then, Cinema Kosari. This is Le. It's written Le Swanika. And pronounce less when Yeah. But I'm sure Andu will tell me that I am pronouncing my own things. <laughs> it was not in French. <coughs> it was in French. Mm -mm. Then. It was in Kiswahili. Right. Mm, <laughs> along this list is Jambo Buana. Uh -huh. Habari Gani. Missouri mm. Sana. Yes, that was the Them Mushrooms. The Brothers. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Uyoga, in other words. Teddy Kalanda Harrison. Uh -huh. Nani Kifo, Kifo. Baraka Mwishe. And Remy Ongala. Ah, Remy Ongala. Ongala. Barak Mushe is my penzia nitesa. Tiki kuwaza we we. Na anga na kiyuliza. Eh, do. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, so Remy Ongala, Remy Surambaya. Ongala. Yes, yes, yes. Sang what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kifo. Uh -huh. Okay. Then Nema, DDC, Milimani, Milimani Park. Park. Eh, hey, mm. unajua. Kashalangu, Mombasa Roots. Eh, hey, Mombasa Roots, my friend. Yes. Eh? Uh -huh. Bas, Wale Watu, Hajanin. You know, now we are getting into modern times. Uh -huh. Salome. This is the... Um, uh, precious Stones times two reloaded. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the Precious Stones, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Diamond Platinums <laughs> uh, featuring <laughs> <laughs> Salome. Salome. Uh -huh. uh, you know, that you can remember a song from your childhood and more or less remember each and every word mm. bespeaks volumes about the power of music and Indeed. songs. Yes. Nashindwana Malisi no. Basi. And this one. This song, in modern terms, would say went viral. Mm. It did. My dad used to sing it. <laughs> in, in the other side of the planet. Mm. <laughs> Malaika. Hmm? This thing should have made for the William mm. a multi, multi, multi. Oh, minute. yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hmm? Sana. But it didn't. Sana. It didn't. Every once in a while. And then you said Jambo Buana is there. The Jambo Buana is actually there. Hmm? Yes. Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. Uh, Kenya yetu. Hakuna Matata. Mm. Yes. Them mushrooms. Them yoga. You're righty. Very nice stories. Very nice one. There's a story from uh, the High Court in Kakamega. I'll tell you in about a minute. Huh? Mm -hmm. The High Court has thrown out a defense by a murder convict who said he killed because he was possessed with bouts of evil spirits, which made him mentally unstable. So this is a man who is, uh, his name is uh, uh, Mohammed Ibrahim, who was accused of murder, was found guilty of murder. Now in mitigation, he was saying, uh, judge, please give me a non-custodial sentence because ni mashetani, ni demon. Lady Justice Sophie Chabet Churchill of Kakamega dismissed the defense, which was key among the grounds of Muhammad Ibrahim's pre-sentence uh, pre, pre seeking to be handed a non-custodial sentence. This court cannot determine the role of evil spirits in Ibrahim's actions, she said. It would be a travesty of justice if every offender was allowed to explain away his or her crime by blaming some mysterious spirits, forces, the devil. Gods or God, the judge said, we have no way of ascertaining such evil spirits or forces as they are beyond the human realm. So what was thrown out? Huh? His case completely? No, no, no. Huh? His mitigation. Oh. Saying that, you, you know, please don't. So he was sentenced, 20, 12 year sentence. He was given a 12 year sentence in jail. Oh, that's that for that. He had wanted to be given a non custodial sentence, saying, Aki judge, I was a Mm, the Don't judge said, I, like that. I, I, you killed somebody, my friend. You killed somebody. Mm. Ah, yeah. Keep it here for more conversations. So, when are we doing the bari bariatric conversation? Sai. It's Sai. Right now, now. now. Right Swallowing now. balloons. Good morning, 7 a.m.
fills up your life. At the top of the hour on Vibes Radio. Good morning, this is Newsworm Dennis Aceto. President William Brute has asked African countries to work together to confront their challenges. He said the continent's leadership must step forward and champion for economic sovereignty. The president observed that it is time for Africa to adopt local solutions to tackle its problems. He was speaking in Moroni during the 48th Independence Day celebration of the Comoros. The Teacher Service Commission has set out a five-year recruitment target that will see an additional 111,870 teachers listed in a bid to address staffing gaps in public schools. Speaking during the launch of the 2023-2027 strategic plan, TSC CEO Nancy Machete said the recruitment will build on the momentum set by President William Ruto's administration under the 2022-2023 financial year. Machete did not, however, give any indication on how many teachers the commission was projecting to recruit under the 2023-2024 financial year, saying TSC will lease 20,000 intern teachers. She noted that TSC has been allocated 4.7 billion shillings under the 2023-2024 financial year for the recruitment of 20,000 intern teachers to support the staff complement in public schools. Still on matters education and Ministry of Education has instructed all schools across the country with arrears in payment of postal boxes to ensure they clear using allocated resources through a circular to all county education directors. Director of Secondary Education Paul Kibet on behalf of Education Principal Secretary Bailey Kipsang said failing to pay for the postal boxes is unacceptable and that it amounts to financial indiscipline. According to Kibet, the Postal Corporation brought the matter to the attention that schools across the country continue being in arrears in the payment of postal boxes. In addition, the ministry warned schools against sharing the boxes immediately, noting that every learning institution has its own allocation of resources. The Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Services online application portal has been reopened to give students the third and final chance to choose courses, universities and colleges afresh. The move, according to KUCCPS, was prompted by the 9% of those who qualified for university admission and had not submitted any application. The portal will, however, be closed Saturday. In a statement, KUCCPS said that 91% of the students who qualified for university admission in the 2022 to Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education Examination have applied for placement for higher learning institutions according to the Kenya Universities and Colleges Central Placement Services. And critical operations within devolved units will remain in limbo as the standoff between members of the Kenya Assembly and Salaries and Remuneration Commission of Remuneration Review lingers. This is after SRC opposed the proposal by MCAs to increase their salaries to 40% over governor's gross salary, which stands at 924,000, to raise their salary to 390,000 shillings, 270 per month. MCAs currently earn about 144,000. 375 shillings, which includes a basic salary of 86,625, a house allowance of 45,000, and a salary market adjustment of 12,750 shillings. Appearing before the Senate Devolution Committee, SRC Chair Lin Mengich told senators that parameters for job evaluation criteria stipulated in the Constitution and SRC Act 2011 is not based on the governor's salary to cap the pay for ward representatives. And the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission has recovered 9.45 million shillings from a private company believed to have fraudulently acquired their funds in the purchase of public cemetery land by the defunct Nairobi City Council in 2008. The recovered sum is part of the 283 million shillings that the government had disbursed to the then Nairobi City Town Clerk as payment for the purchase of land for use as a public cemetery. Investigations by the EACC established that city county officials colluded with other individuals to purchase land worth 110 million shillings and shared the remaining 173 million shillings amongst themselves and private companies associated with them. 
and Embakasi East Member of Parliament Babo Wino has asked the court to acquit him of the criminal charges he is facing. The legislator was found to have a case to answer in the matter where he is charged with misuse of firearm. Owino says that the prosecution has failed to prove its case beyond any reasonable doubt, adding that none of the prosecution witnesses, including the victim DJ Wolf, has been able to establish that he had his firearm at the day of the incident. This is News Warm. Dennis Asada, good morning. Spice FM. Nakuru. It's still dark out. A few minutes after 7 o'clock and we're looking at traffic. It's heavy on Jogo Road, at least as you get towards, or rather just past the train station at Makadara. Uh, as you go towards Landis, you'll be fine getting into the CBD. It's building up on the thicker superhighway and it's also heavy as you come in on Kiambu Road. All of this coming off the northern bypass. Limu Road is starting to build up and we'll see that action as you go closer to 8 o'clock. Coming out of United Nations Avenue and then past uh, the village market. Some traffic there. Coming out of Westerns, James Gishiro buzzing. As you get towards Waiaki Way, I would like to see that build up later as well. As you're coming off in Gongro, you should be all right. Southern Bypass looks pretty good. How about a scenic drive through the city as you get into the CBD? All right, let's see what it looks like closer to 8. Let's talk on Spice FMKE on Twitter. Keep things moving. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, Wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room. The only way to Good start morning. your day. Seven minutes after seven on the seventh day of the seventh month, 2023. How was that? Perfect timing, right? Seven, 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 seven. 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 Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Oh. No. On this day, uh, 76 years ago, my mother was born. Oh, wow. It's your mom's birthday. Yes. Oh, so now we should have sang happy birthday. Yes. Birthday. Sing. <coughs> What's your mom's name? My mom's name is Mama Eric. What do you mean? What else? <laughs> what else oh, would my mother's name be? be? And she's Eric's mother. Why are people angry? <laughs> and I want to sing. I want to spoil the pot of singing. She's called Lilies. Oh, that's such a pretty name. You yes. See? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mama Eric. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Cabeza. <laughs> it's a dutiful son. Yes. Mm. Yeah. It's a beautiful son. Dutiful. Oh, okay. you? Beautiful was when he was a toddler. Remember that picture? <laughs> mm. Yes. Ah, that was it. You were actually, really <laughs> actually a really pretty boy. You cute. You were actually a really pretty boy. And then life happened. <laughs> and then life happened. <laughs> Why? Mama, can you hear them? Mama. <laughs> they're here. <laughs> On your birthday. They're, they're talking about you. Products <laughs> like this, <laughs> surely. <laughs> anyway, happy birthday to my mom. Mm. Uh, everybody who's in Kimana, please go and say happy birthday. Mutapawak, mm. kombe chai. Yes. Nagegi. <laughs> Nagegi. <laughs> okay. Put a smile on a child's face. It's important. Why? It's important to think about children who don't have access to safe drinking water. And that's what Colgate has been saying. You know, very many communities around the country don't have access to that safe drinking water. Yes, you have access to water, but it is in a state or it's some long distance. Now, what Colgate have decided to do is to identify communities that are in dire need of that 
water and access to water and especially around schools and they've decided what they're going to do is sink some 30 water wells for some 30 communities benefiting a total of over 150 no more than 150 thousand people and they'd like you to help just walk into any naivas supermarket or you can go to naivas online and shop from their e-commerce platform as long as you buy colgate from naivas then you're helping in this because part of that money will go towards sinking the 30 one of the 30 water wells mm. uh, it's not that they have added an extra two bob to the price of colgate no same price of colgate just that they've decided that part of the proceeds will go towards this very noble project. Today's Friday, we always have a Health Friday conversation. And today's conversation is about weight and managing your weight. And if you need to lose your weight, then you get into that conversation of losing your weight. We're joined by two ladies. Uh, they are from Nairobi Bariatric Center. The first time I heard of that, I was like, oh, what on earth is that all about? You know, when you first pronounced it, I heard geriatric. Yeah. And, I thought, okay. and theatrics. And I thought, okay. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to discuss old age. Yeah. Old age. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to make good time, and then we talk about <laughs> old age on Sabah Sabah Day. On Sabah Sabah okay. Day, surely. Yes. So, Nairobi Bariatric Center, we're joined by two people. One of them is the Anastasia Shukna. She is the operations manager and Jerry Kobania, who is a nutritionist. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. Thank you. Thank you for having us. That what you're sitting on is the hot seat of the situation room. Now we're going to heat it up because we want to <laughs> actually understand what you do. We've been hearing about people swallowing balloons and then losing weight. That's how we know this story. You swallow a balloon, you lose weight. You'll explain. But CT as the day's proverb, and the proverbs for this week have been from? Libya. Okay. Now, the interesting thing about Saba Saba Day, mm -hmm. we remember it in this country because of some significant events that took place. However, at the UN, today is a designated Swahili Day. Yes. The UN has six official languages. Swahili has become the seventh. Mm -hmm. Meaning, it's the first African language to be given a designated day. Spanish has their day, Arabic has its day, English has its day, French has its day. According to the UN now, Swahili has entered that day. So, in an hour before this, we're talking about Swahili songs. Yes. The thinking behind it, and those in the media have remembered, songs that have been made popular in the Swahili language. Mm -hmm. So, the 7th of July is an important day. So a big day. Yes, language day. Mm -hmm. Now the proverb, the proverb for today is from Libya. The language that most Libyans speak is actually Arabic. It is also a UN language, okay. designated language. He who is to be hanged can insult the Pasha. He who is to be hanged can insult the Pasha. Yes. And the Pasha here is? A senior government official, a ruler, a person of some importance in a, in a government or mm. in a kingdom, in a state, and someone who has authority and power, mm. and someone who can make a life very difficult. Mm. Yes, if they so much as gleam a little disrespect from you. Mm. But in this case, we're saying, if you're going to be hanged, you can insult the Pasha. Mm. Tell the Pasha to go suck a lemon or something. Okay. Yes. It's important to clarify, because you see, in... Uh, Kenyan lingo, hmm. kukupasha is either to give you words or to bring you news, or, or. kupasha is hmm. to give you words. Maneno atakao kuweka mahali pako. Essentially, yes. Loja and takupasha. To put in your place. Yes. Whatever so the place think is. The pasha is a person who does that. <laughs> Isn't it also to cool down? Hmm? That's kupoesha. Kupoesha, okay. Yes. Hmm. Kupasha moto pia ni different. Isn't it? What's yes. Pasha moto? That's what I was thinking of actually. To warm. To warm up something, mm. right? Mm. Okay, ladies. What's your interpretation of this proverb? First of all, what do you understand from the proverb? What are they saying? He who does what, CT? He who is to be hanged mm -hmm. can insult the Pasha. He who is to be hanged can insult the Pasha. Jerry, let's start with you. Um... I mean, you're already facing the consequences of your actions, so you might as well just go out with a bang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 that's a nice one. 
Anastasia? Yeah, I second that. What do you have to lose at that point? Let it rip. All the way. All the way. Yeah. What are they going to do to you? Kill you? Kill you. Kill you. <laughs> 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 so what's the message here? What's the lesson that the Libyans are passing? I would say maybe at some point, you know, um, when all things are lost, you have to try everything, everything that would have been off limits because, you know, there's no other option for you. So for me, yeah, I'm hearing it in the perspective that there's, there's always an option. You know, you can, you can try pushing the limits, pushing mm. the boundaries, even when it seems like, you know, everything is lost. Mm. That's how I hear it. I Very interesting. Jerry and you? Yeah, me too. Because um, in a situation where you're forced to the corner, there must be something you can do to wiggle your way out. Mm -hmm. And that is the time to do it. So. City, mm -hmm. Max. On a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is the highest score you can get, you both get 10. Oh. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> I should have lingered a bit, huh? Yeah. To, 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 to introduce so an element of suspense <laughs> to it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So introduce us to the Nairobi Bariatric Center, mm -hmm. Anastasia. Yes. Thank you first for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Mm. Uh, we've been around for around 15 years. So you may not have heard of us in the past, but now more and more life is becoming digital and we understand the power of being in the digital space. Mm -hmm. So we specialize in weight loss management. Mm -hmm. So it's not cosmetic. I want to be very clear here that weight management is not cosmetic. It's very much medical mm -hmm. because we look at your body mass, at your waist circumference, at your body fat. Mm -hmm. um, and if it deviates from the norm, every step that it deviates above the norm can lead to an exponential number of weight, weight related diseases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Diabetes is on the rise in Kenya. Obesity is on the rise. Um, there are some studies that show up to over 20% of urban women are either overweight or obese. Mm. That's a massive figure. So what we're trying to do is give people the option, either surgical or non-surgical, to tackle and handle their weight. Because we, we are in the business of improving your quality of life. Not cosmetic, improving your quality of life. Okay. What is cosmetic? Because you keep insisting it's not cosmetic. Well, something like liposuction, for example, would be cosmetic. What? On earth is liposuction. That? What's that? It's when they remove fat um, surgically, they scrape out the fat under your skin, mm. and so they tone your body. It's like body contouring procedures. So whether it's breast augmentation or liposuction or butt lifts, all these things that you would say, now that's a cosmetic procedure. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're contou contouring and, the and, body. And people pay for these things. Of course. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can liposuction not also be a weight Manage. management procedure? As a rule, generally lipos liposuction can lead to some loss of fat. Okay. Yes, so so you know you would hear something like three to four liters has been removed, right? But it's not a weight uh, management because it's subcutaneous. So that means under the skin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But any a lot of the time, the most dangerous fat actually is visceral fat. That's the fat that's around your organs. How are you going to remove the fat around your heart? around your stomach, around mm. your liver. These are the things that are compressing your internal organs and leading to all the host of medical problems that people are dealing with. Mm. Okay. So that's the main difference. The cosmetic procedures are really, you, you see a change physically in and terms of And many of them are surgical. Mm. Sorry? And they are surgical. They are, but also weight loss procedures can be surgical. So gastric bypass or the gastric sleeve. You yeah. must have heard Willis Raburu had his gastric uh, bypass surgery. He said it in we did publicly, it. yes. He did it with us, yes. Mm -hmm. And that was a, now it's a surgical procedure where we are physically, there's two things we do. It's a restrictive procedure where the size of the stomach is reduced physically. And it's a malabsorptive procedure, meaning the calories that a person is eating are not being absorbed in a regular fashion. So there's less calories absorbed as a person is eating as the food passes through the digestion faster. But is there not something that you do to circumvent a natural process in order for that to happen that could then be dangerous? 
What do you mean a natural the process? malabsorption of uh, where your body would naturally absorb calories or nutrients. Essentially, what we're saying now is that you're circumventing that process. Yes. Is so, that... So, yes. Mm. Uh, I mean, any surgical intervention should always be as a last measure. Mm. Okay. Anyone who comes to our facility first has to qualify. So they would have had to try to lose weight in the past with diets, with exercises, with other methods and have failed. And being now in a place where they're facing medical complications, if it's diabetes, high blood pressure or a BMI over body mass index over 40, that is already considered a very, very problematic state to be in. Mm -hmm. All right. So what we're trying to do, yes, we are adjusting the way that food is absorbed where it's not natural anymore mm -hmm. necessarily, mm -hmm. but any cons that come from a procedure, which may be something like malnutrition, because you'll have to be taking supplements, mm -hmm. these cons are far outweighed by having lost weight, gotten to a normal weight, and so you're not in danger of the more deadly diseases that would come with you having extra weight, mm -hmm. like diabetes, high blood pressure, risk of strokes, mm -hmm. high cholesterol, all mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. So yes, there is definitely pros and cons, mm -hmm. but we always say that the pro of having lost weight to begin with um, is much better, is already setting you up for higher quality of life mm. than anything that would come from the surgery itself. Okay. You know, the processes such as the one you mentioned, for it to have been in existence for 15 years, it means the people who consume this particular product. And if... 15 years anything to go by, it means there are people who found it useful, the people who benefited from it. But everything that benefits human beings always has an effect that perhaps was not purpose or not intended. These processes that we are here to speak of, what are some of the things that you have witnessed, you have seen happening? This is what you purpose to do, the outcome is good. But something else occurs that you perhaps didn't figure out. And then if, if indeed such a thing does happen, how do you mitigate? I like that question. Um, because first of all, we are scientists here. So yes. we don't experiment on people. Mm. These processes have been going on. These procedures have been in practice for over 50 years. Mm. So the <laughs> studies on the long-term longev longevity of these studies is very clear. We don't bring a person into our offices and think, ah, you know what, let's just try X, Y, Z. No, mm. these things are very well established in the medical community. So our procedures are as safe as can be. But as, as you're asking, there are some risks that are associated with any procedure. So if you're asking about the risks, we can talk about the risks. There are always risks <laughs> and there are always outcomes. That's what I'm calling outcomes that were not intended and if it is scientific, as you say, every scientific protocol will tell you this. Right. That this is, is a likelihood. We do not know, but there's a likelihood. <laughs> and you also told, in the event that this happens, mm. then this is how we will go about dealing with it. Now, a scientific process is that detailed. Mm -hmm. Now, it is this that I'm asking about. Right. How do you go about this process? Should something untoward happen? So um, the risks of the surgeries, for example, is less than 0.01%. Okay. So they're already very low risk to begin with. They're mm. done laparoscopically, meaning there's small incisions that are made in your stomach and a camera is put inside with instruments. So there's no big scar. Risks that could occur can be, say, infection post-surgery. But we monitor, we monitor the patients in hospital for two days post-op so in case we have had a situation where we had an infection that has occurred post-op one and we catch it the day right after so um, the the methods that are in place the structures are in place to monitor our patients and make sure that everything is accounted for but as of effects that uh, haven't been anticipated is say for example someone post-op has become sugar intolerant that's an intended consequence mm -hmm. but as you adjust the way that the food is absorbed, you may find some people come, they're no longer able to eat sugar at all, whether it's in fruits or it's sugar.
proper. Um, or they've become lactose tolerant after being lactose intolerant. So the changes in the foods that people are able to take is actually very interesting. They come in with mm. a totally different palate, actually. Uh, even the, the tongue has changed. Their tastes have changed. Mm. So it's an unintended consequence, but it's very interesting for us to observe. For a process and a procedure that has been there, as you say, for 50 years, the thing that research does, research documents, there must be over time, the change such as the one you've mentioned, where the palate, the taste buds do a thing and suddenly you you can't, there's certain things that you enjoyed before and now you can no longer enjoy. Has there been documentation of some commonalities, things that have occurred more often with patients over time? things that have been seen, changes that patients have, because I guess you could say the changes are unique to every person, and in many cases, as you say, nothing happens. Mm. You have the process, the procedure, and you get on with life. But when this, these anomalies that are in, unintended occur, have they been recorded, and are there any commonalities, things that you find common? For, for instance, when you are going to inject someone, say, with a drug during a drug trial, one of the things that you look for is the shock that some people get. Some people, the prick of the needle causes serious trauma for them. Some, it's the sight of the needle, not even the prick. So these are things that have been noticed, so they'll be noticed. And you'll be told that you need to watch out for this because this is what can happen to a patient when this and this process for the procedure that you've been involved in. Are there any such things that you've listed and said, these are the things that we've noted over time with the patients that we've had in the years that this process has been in practice? Well, it's very important to note that the non-surgical and surgical procedures have different results on mm. the patient's body. Mm. So, so for like the gastric balloon, the non-surgical gastric balloon, um, you may find that you know, as the patient has the balloon, they may have some ex expected side effects that come with the balloon. So that may be, uh, they're not able to, to eat larger portions. Again, the change of the palate because the balloon can stomach. We say the balloon stomachs some things and not others. Mm. You have to listen to what your balloon wants. Mm. So those are expected consequences. Mm. The gastric bypass or the sleeve, now those are more, these are procedures that are surgical and, you know, I would say, have more consequences th that we're watching for. Mm. So a change in palate may be one, but also um, maintaining uh, you know, patients have to be on supplements for the rest of their life. Oh. Because, as I said, it's a malabsorptive procedure. Okay. So the stomach becomes 150 ml in volume. So it's very small. That's the amount of food you can Reduced take at a sitting. Reduced from 1.5 to 3 liters. So it becomes essentially... It becomes a very tenth. Small. a tenth That's of what right. it normally would be. That's mm. right. Mm. So it, we call it a stomach pouch. Okay. So for people who have not been able to lose weight by conventional methods, this is the this is the last resort. This mm. is the option for them, because with these procedures, you'll find, okay, yes, they have to be on supplements for the rest of their life, correct? But there, we have patients who go into remission from diabetes two weeks post-op, remission forever and as their weight goes down because it takes up to a year mm. for weight to stabilize these patients keep reducing weight until they get to a normal weight they're no longer on their blood pressure meds no longer taking diabetes shots mm. so i hear your question and i understand you know you're trying to figure out mm. what are the side effects the what are the, the risks and yeah. yes and these are very important questions that we have to talk about any medical procedure you step in to do, you have to understand the risks very, very well. Mm. But at the end of the day, what I'm trying to communicate here is that the risks with these procedures are far lower than the risks living with obesity. Mm. Actually, the benefits are... Yes, the benefits greater. outweigh the risks. The risks. Correct. Yes. I want to bring in Jerry here. We'll talk about that nutrition and everything. But first of all, so is it true that in this gastric balloon procedure, somebody actually swallows a balloon? Uh, yes, it's true. We have what kind of balloon? Okay, we have. Is it inflated or does it inflate when it goes in? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are two types of balloon. Mm. One is inserted uh, endoscopically, meaning you're sedated, 
and uh, it's inserted through your mouth to your stomach and inflated while there it's a silicone balloon okay yes and this is the other kind of balloon where you swallow a pill mm. and then it's inflated you don't you don't have to be sedated for this one so just swallow it and inflate it and remove the wire and you're free to go okay where exactly does this balloon sit in someone's body i'm thinking of my body and the balloon I already have a belly so now if we add a balloon to it <laughs> where, where are we all accommodating this <laughs> and you change your trouser size is that, um, <laughs> waist yes. 32 to waist 42 what 50 yes, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking mm. so, where exactly is it nestled in the body it's in your stomach oh, yes and as she said the stomach has a capacity of 1.5 to 3 liters and the balloon is filled to a capacity of 430 to 500 ml mm -hmm. yeah so you don't even really realize you have it outwardly you can feel it for the first maybe month but ideally you don't feel it the whole time okay yes so it goes and sits somewhere sits somewhere in, in your stomach. stomach yes what makes it stop there what makes it not move lower or come up? The way it's placed, the position, mm. yes. Uh, I can also answer that question because there's two sphincters as you're coming into the stomach. Mm. There's a tight little space like this that it, it's quite small. So the size of the balloon, it's big enough that it wouldn't go your esophagus. So there's a non-return so valve. It's, <laughs> it comes from your stomach through your esophagus and then there's a little sphincter mm. that it can't pass up or down or from the bottom you also have a sphincter so top and bottom you have a sphincter that will keep it in there silicon you say correct why silicon well silicon is the material that has been shown to be able to stay in the human body for an extended period of time mm -hmm. the balloon stays for six to eight months mm -hmm. um, silicon breasts can be in place for up to 10 years so silicon is quite well you know, quite well established. I see you laughing. <laughs> yeah, because you're looking at me and telling me silicone breasts are very useful. And I'm thinking, what would I be doing with silicone breasts? Uh, Maybe not yourself, but you may know people who have silicone breasts. Yes, so. you may see it. <laughs> Without knowing. Exactly. <laughs> For the last 10 years. <laughs> so, let's um, take a break. Okay. And then we continue this conversation. It's an interesting one because now you've said the thing goes in and it does not can't come up can't come down so in this after these eight months how then does it come out you'll tell us that right it's a health friday conversation today we are talking about weight management losing weight through bariatric surgery and the gastric balloon very interesting conversation here joined by Jerry Kobani, who's a nutritionist at the nairobi bariatric center and anastasia shukina who is the operations manager keep it here for more as we take this break, CT yesterday was the premiere of a new show on Showmax. Mm. One of the Showmax originals. Actually, almost every movie you watch will have a theme, a mm. dominant theme and sub-themes. Mm. Now this one, my take on it as I was watching it is the conflict that arises between someone's faith and someone's actions and how relations among siblings, among relatives, among faith leaders come into play. More importantly, the value system and where money and everything that is attached to it, where it fits in and the role it plays, and how its presence or its absence begins to change lives and the consequences of it, especially when the money in question was ill-gotten. <laughs> hey. Wait, are we talking about Faithless, the series um, yes. on Showmax? Yes. Or is it a literature book? <laughs> I used to be a teacher of literature. Yes. So my take on it has to be from that perspective. Indeed. I, I am explaining it so that it can be understood clearly. So you watched the first episode yesterday? Yes, yes, And you yes. clearly enjoyed it. I first of all started with uh, the uh, that summary. What do they call it? It's called a trailer. A trailer, yes. Yeah. That one. I watched that one. You watched the summary? Yeah, I watched the summary. Mm -hmm. Then uh, then I went for this. The first part is called episode. Very episode good. one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Got that one. <laughs> <laughs> It's called Faithless. It's on Showmax. It's exclusive uh, with new episodes every week. Sign up to showmax.com today 
watch whatever you want anytime anywhere on any device no tv schedule no contract no commitments no adverts no installation fees what you do get is a fantastic content and faithless is the latest get it on show max today this is the situation this is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Good morning, and I love your show. Thank you. Thank you. Having come from a Kikuyu radio background, I migrated to Spice <laughs> because of the content. I was born in a slum, but somehow I got a break in life. So sometimes when you see the sweating coming out because of the passion and whatever it is, <laughs> <laughs> behind the noise, there are people. And we share the same umbilical cord. It shouldn't be like that. I am so disappointed. We used to tell Honda uh, Boraila Molotinga that he's doing police of conmanship. And even President Uhuru Kenyatta, Srikali, he is going to conmanship earlier. You cannot promise people that you reduce tax, then you double. In politics, mm. there is uh, the issue of trust. Mm. For you to turn around and then stab the same people who gave you that trust, there is no other level of dishonesty. And I imabo, utaona dunia tu. The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. Cloudy conditions in Nairobi at 13, highs of 17 and lows of 10. And we'll see cloudy conditions at 15 in Nakuru. Highs of 22, 17 will be the high and mostly cloudy in Yeri at 13. And it's 15 and cloudy in Elzoret. Highs of 20 and lows of 13. Mostly cloudy in Mombasa this morning at 23. Going to highs of 28 and we'll see highs of 28 as well. In Asani Malindi at 24. It's cloudy at 19 in Kisumu. Highs of 27 and 26 will be the high and mostly cloudy. Kakamega at 18. Kampala is sunny at 19. Highs of 24 and Darius mostly cloudy conditions at 23 going to highs of 28 the winter continues in johannesburg at seven degrees highs of 17 and lows of six cloudy at 25 in lagos highs of 30 and 33 will be the high in a mostly clear kinshasa at 20 Not doing too poorly this Friday morning. A little bit of traffic on the thicker superhighway. It's much more on Kiambu Road. Everybody's going to connect to Muthaiga Square going towards Pangani. And we'll probably see some of that going on to Wangari Mathai Way. James Kishiro also building up traffic as you get towards Waiyaki Way. And we're looking at some traffic coming in on Limuru Road through towards Muthaiga. And uh, what else are we looking at? Makadara, the train station on Jogo Road. Some traffic heading out there. And North Airport Road, a little bit busy. But traffic in the city today is not doing too badly. Let's take a look closer to 8, or rather after 8, where it is outbound. And it's still pretty dark at uh, 7.30. Probably as you're heading out west, you'll find that uh, clouds are low. So please be careful. Let's talk on Spice at MKE on Twitter as we try to keep things moving this morning. Are you ready? Okay. Spice FM. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 right, Spice. For the next 23 minutes with Anastasia Shukina and Jerry Kubania, both from the Nairobi Bariatric Center on this Health Friday, we are talking about weight management. Jerry, so you reduce my stomach to a tenth of what it naturally is mm -hmm. obviously it's gonna affect uh, everything else so i'm um, you're reducing my intake of food but food is nutrition you're a nutritionist so what does that mean to my body so um after the procedure you are put on a special diet to help you um, manage the effects of the surgery. So this means you won't really be able to eat the way you used to. And I'm talking about both the kind of food you're eating, the amount, and the consistency. Okay. Yeah. So for the first month, it's basically a liquid diet. <laughs> for the first month? For the first month mm -hmm. after the surgery and also really after the balloon um, insertion. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a liquid diet, which is um, easily digested in the stomach okay. uh, and easily tolerated in the stomach. Okay. Yeah. Um, for the liquid diet here doesn't mean water. No. Is it a balanced liquid diet? Yes. So, so it's a special liquid. Let me explain. Okay. <laughs> Please. It's very disturbing. 
because I can't eat ugali and I have to drink porridge. You have to drink ugali. Yes, I have to drink porridge. ugali. <laughs> As Jerry is about to explain. Yes. <laughs> okay, so there's a transition. We call it a transition period. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We move from clear liquids, which basically means anything that you can see through once you put in a glass. Uh, these include uh, your broth, yep. your diluted juices, uh, your teas. Mm-hmm. And then from there, we move on to a full liquid diet. And this diet is just the normal food you'd eat, but in pureed form. Okay. okay. So you can make a balanced diet. Like you recommend. a baby. Yes, exactly. Like mm. baby food. Mm-hmm. So you go back to what <laughs> you used to be fed at uh, six months. Right? Okay. Yeah, so it's balanced. You have your protein. You actually prioritize your protein intake. Mm. You have your vegetables in there. You have um, the right starch in there, all blended into a puree Mm. so that you can tolerate it better. Mm -hmm. So you're still getting the nutrients you need, but in um, a limited and changed consistency. Okay. Okay. So what is ha- what is happening in the body at this time? Because we're still talking about the balloon, right? Mm-hmm. So what is happening in the body at this time when you've introduced this balloon? So the balloon is sitting in your stomach, right? And then you've changed, obviously you've changed your diet. You've gone back to the liquid as you would when you were a baby. But what is happening that would then um, catalyze this weight loss even as you're you know, on liquid diet, what's happening that would now bring about the loss of weight? Okay. So the balloon takes up space mm-hmm. in your stomach, which means you won't be able to have as much as you used to before. Mm. You come from, as she said, uh, your stomach is elastic. It can expand to accommodate a lot of food. But once you have that placement of the balloon in there, there's only so much you can tolerate. There's only so much you can eat. So the reduction in food... Uh, definitely puts you on a calorie deficit, Mm -hmm. which ideally means um, you are not taking in uh, too much energy for it to be stored in the body as fat. And you're taking in less, which means now your body results to using up the stored energy. Mm -hmm. Your fat reserves now get used because what you're having is less. Mm -hmm. So you're introducing a drought in the stomach, Mm -hmm. in the body. I'm seeing a situation where you're constantly hungry. Mm. No, we call it a break from hunger. So you actually don't feel hungry. You don't feel so hungry because you now have the balloon taking up space. So you get full faster with the things that you would normally eat. You just get full faster. You're not as hungry as you would have been in the past. Mm -hmm. But feeling of hunger is not a factor of the size of the stomach. So feeling of hunger because comes you have a big stomach, you feel hungry all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, it comes from the hormones, <laughs> the hormones in your stomach, right? So ghrelin. Yeah. And where the balloon is sitting is the place where the hormones are being produced. Okay. okay. So essentially, we're trying to the fact that it's sitting there, it's constantly suppressing your appetite, mm-hmm. and on top of that, um, it delays the speed at which the food is evacuated from your stomach. Okay. So you would think that if it's normally evacuated, you would have the regular hunger pangs. But because it takes longer for food to leave your stomach, you're feeling fuller for longer. Okay, so explain to me. So somebody who is wants it, it, somebody who wants to lose this weight, you have this, you have the uh, balloon in, right? You're on this liquid diet for a few days, and then for a month, and then now you start to slowly introduce few more solid foods. How do you lose the weight that is already there? Because we're saying suppressing appetite. So that means anything new coming in, you're eating much less of it. Mm. But you still have this weight in your body. How does that leave is my question. Because the new food is what you're suppressing, isn't it? It's what you're reducing. It's what you're reducing. You're and suppressing your appetite from the intake of anything new after the balloon. But you still have, my, like me now, you still have the, the weight. Where Where will the weight go? go? Okay. And, it's, and it's not coming out as it's regularly. Not coming you're out, not exactly. going to the toilet as regularly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, first uh, we have to understand how you gain weight, right? right? You gain weight by having more than you need. You mm. gain weight by your body absorbing more calories than you need because yeah. you've eaten more. Yeah. So your body only uses so much and stores the rest mm-hmm. Yeah, for a rainy day. Yeah. Yeah. So now when you reduce how much you're taking in, that means your body needs to make up for it. Your yeah. body still needs the energy 
your body still needs to go on with the daily activities your body still needs um energy to function mm -hmm. which means it needs to draw that energy from somewhere else mm -hmm. and this is now when your fast uh, your fat stores get used up okay so you're not taking enough mm -hmm. for you to be able to store extra you're taking much less mm -hmm. but then there's also your daily uh, calorie goal these are goal your body needs in order to function properly yeah. and that's where it uh, draws from your fat stores now it takes uh, it tries to use up the stored energy the one it's stored for a rainy day yes that is how you lose the weight okay yes now there's some benefit in having some kind of storage in your body isn't it yeah right. and it's a natural bodily yeah. function it's a natural bodily function that your body will want to store some so that you can use it energy mm. those other things you know um you they even we say you have some breakfast in the morning because you know it kind of w wakes you up it keeps you alive then you can have your mental f other physiological functions that are necessary so in this process what happens because if you use your storage, that's essentially what happens. You get leaner. You lose the weight, right? You use up. So where will you then get storage for you to use in the future? It's a very good question because we don't need very much storage to use in the future. We're not living in the you know, in the cave times when we didn't have food, mm. you know, food is easily available. We don't actually need a lot to store mm -hmm. for us to function properly. So the more there's a normal range within which we need to be in everybody individually mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if you sub go above that range it becomes now unhealthy okay. so within as long as you're within your normal range which will also have fat so anybody who's in a normal range should also have some stored fat mm -hmm. but you're still in your normal weight if you go above it now that's already one way getting there's too much yes but if you go below it equally it's, also it's too little yeah. yeah so whether you're underweight or whether you're overweight the dangers are the same mm -hmm. you're still in danger okay so we're aiming to get you to no your normal weight okay so you have to do the assessment first of course and say based on your physiology your normal your weight should be this so you need to lose 20 kilos 40 kilos 35 kilos whatever correct so how then do you manage that to the exact science of 47 kilos that I need to lose. Is it the size of the balloon? Is it the length, the duration of the balloon in my stomach? Or is it the liquids that I take? That's a very good question because everything we're doing is a tool. So the balloon is a tool, the surgery is a tool. But the main thing that we have to understand is it starts in the mind, your relationship with food. So for us, we're very keen on rebuilding and recreating a positive, healthy relationship with food. Now, the balloon may allow you to lose maybe 10, 15 kilos. If you need more, if you need to lose more or you need to lose less, that comes down to your food choices. That comes down to how many calories you're intaking during the course of your day. Are you eating chips? Are you choosing to eat KFC? Are you choosing to eat vegetables? So we crave food. Food, hunger is hardwired into every human being. You, it's, it's one of the most primal feelings. So how do you kind of square with yourself? How do you understand, you know what, this fried food, our body craves it because from the times when we were still living in caves, mm. we were drawing on that fatty food on that energy so we can store it like jerry was saying for the rainy day yeah. we don't have those rainy days anymore because food is available for us so we're trying to rewire re re-understand for every individual why are you making the food choices you're making mm -hmm. that comes down to psychotherapy now to make you build a new healthy relationship with food mm. okay i've got a question that's coming on social media my friend did the balloon thing cost him about 500,000 shillings and he actually lost weight. Unfortunately, after the balloon was chomolewad, weight has slowly come back and is back to where he started. Mm. What could be the issue here? Yeah, that's it. That's exactly what I was talking about. The psychological part of your relationship with food. Because if you think you cannot regain weight with the surgery, you're wrong. You can. If you think you will not regain weight with the balloon once the balloon is removed, you may. So ultimately, this is a chance while you have the balloon, it's like an intervention to, to give you a break from hunger and then to re-examine and relearn 
your relationship with food so you build habits during this time that you can take with you for the rest of your life so you don't regain the weight. I suspect, and I would be curious to hear from the the person who wrote on social media, mm -hmm. whether there was a psychotherapy element in the treatment of this person, of their friend, whether they were involved in actually adjusting with a therapist to see, you know, what is their relationship with food. Mm. So it's all about food. Weight is food. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Well, exercise, of course, comes into play, but that's now, you know, also it comes down to food because it's all energy. Okay. Yeah, weight is all energy. If you take more energy in that you can burn, you'll put on weight. If you take less energy in mm. than you're burning, you'll lose weight. It's Are mathematical. Are there any exceptions to weight gain beyond food? Mm. Hormonal. Yes. Of, mm -hmm. of course, you have hormonal weight gain. Uh, you may have a slow metabolism that can be genetic. So definitely there's... Uh, so weight gain is not just one dimensional where it's yeah. only um, only one element or another. There's environmental factors, social factors, but ultimately the mathematical element, element is, is it. So it, <coughs> hormonal, for example, metabolism is slow, mm. right? Mm. But this, the, the same mathematical principles apply. You're not burning as much as you're taking in, so you'll put on weight. So how do you treat those? How do you treat the, if, if a bigger contributor to your weight gain is hormonal? Mm -hmm. or physiologically, genetically predisposed to uh, big weight. How do you treat that with a balloon inside you or whatever procedure? That will come down to the reports from the endocrinologist, which will be reviewed by the surgeon and the whole medical team mm. to review whether this is something that is now, you know, whether there are other interventions that have to be taken into account. But as a rule, generally, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a whole medical team. Every individual is approached um, very uniquely, you know, mm -hmm. we have to look at your individual medical history and figure mm. out what's best for you. It's not a one size fits all. Sure. By medical, do we mean what we know of medical to be? Doctors who are trained, gone through med school, uh, have been licensed to operate nurses and all? Yes, exactly. Or are we talking about traditional medicine? <laughs> Herbalists. <laughs> Herbalists. Mm. No. People who've no, acquired no. the skill over time, passed on generation <laughs> to generation. So the question then is, you know of the Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Board that licenses and regulates health professionals and health facilities in Kenya. Do you have a license from KMPD? Of B? course. Of course we do. If as we a were. what? As a hospital? As a clinic? As a lab? What are you licensed as? We are currently licensed as a clinic, mm -hmm. as a medical facility, yes. But we could not practice if we did not have a license. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Everybody who works at uh, the Nairobi Ger Geriatric Center is... Bariatric. Bariatric. <laughs> We're talking geriatric. about words. <laughs> That's a new word to B -b -b learn. B -b 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 bariatric is bariatric. weight loss. <laughs> bariatric means weight loss. <laughs> <laughs> geriatric is the other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mother is 77 today, so... <laughs> Age is a thing. <laughs> so listen, so everybody, all the doctors and all, are licensed by the board. Absolutely. They have a practicing license. Absolutely. Everybody that I find in there has a practicing license, 100%. including nutritionist Jerry. Absolutely. Yes. Qualified, licensed to operate in this country. Mm. Yes. Okay. In the, in the um, regulations and all, do you get visits from the board who come and inspect what you're doing? Yes, of course. Periodic visits are absolutely, they have to happen, yes. So this procedure has actually been sanctioned by government? Yes, yes. Okay. So then it's recognized as a medical procedure. Mm -hmm. Are there people who use their medical insurance at your facility? So it depends on the insurance that people have. Mm -hmm. so some who have uh, international insurances, because unfortunately in Kenya, uh, the insurance companies have not jumped on that bandwagon. And if you know the journey of medical weight loss in the U.S., it also took a very long time. And actually for patients to fight with insurance companies to get them to cover these procedures. Mm -hmm. So we would love for these procedures to be more accessible and more available. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. What does the uh, insurance, if we want to look at like NHIF today yeah. or any of the other private insurances, what, because, you know, a lot of times when you want to, when you go in for surgery, uh, and your insurance is going to cover it. They ask you things like pre-existing conditions and all manner of things. So what does insurance in Kenya view these procedures as today that would then either deny you or 
uh, give you permission to use your insurance to have these procedures what do they view this procedure as cosmetic or medical exactly so that's the problem because mm. they view it as cosmetic mm -hmm. and ultimately that's what we need to change that understanding because the rest of the world views it as medical mm -hmm. it's covered in most developed countries as a medical procedure that you can qualify for with your insurance with mm -hmm. your government insurance here that's not the case mm -hmm. and that's the, that's a conversation that we, we want more and more insurance companies to start having because ultimately it costs them more to pay for someone who has a heart attack or who has diabetes mm. than for someone to lose weight and not develop these conditions to begin with. Why do you think it's so difficult to convince them that this is medical and not cosmetic? I think it's more bureaucratic red tape. Mm. I think it takes time. You know, it took a lot of time in, uh, in Europe, in North America. Uh, it takes, it's just something that takes time, but we hope to get there eventually. Is it mm. because or maybe could it contribute because it changes the way you look much more than how you function? I think that, that has, there's an element to that. Mm -hmm. But like I said, for us, it's not about how you look necessarily. It's mm -hmm. about your health, mm -hmm. right? So maybe that, I think there has to be something there too, too because you can see a marked difference in how someone looks yeah. post losing weight. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that's also the misconception that they think it's a cosmetic thing. Mm -hmm. Please remember that we come from cultures and communities where having weight is not was not considered a problem. Mm. Yeah. Correct. In mm. fact, it was a positive thing. Indeed. That's it. So now they're Even changed. Now, so yes, yeah. they're no predominantly yeah. in some communities that I know of, mm. Mm. like the one I come from. Mm -hmm. Somebody who has weight is con it's considered good. It mm. is not bad. Mm. So how can this good thing now be bad so that it requires treatment? Medical intervention. Mm. Yes, right. and even then. Yeah. It's a fanciful thing. You have weight, so you won't lose it. Why do you need a medical insurance for it? Which brings me to that other question, yes. Anastasia. You see, the world has really been working hard at communicating differently about weight. You know, going against body shaming, going against all those things and trying to teach children that, yeah, no matter your weight, no matter your size, you're fine. You're good enough. Now, this way, the promotion that you're doing even on social media, you know, I used to be this big and now look what I've done in the last one year. I'm now feeling better. I'm, I'm a better version of myself. Are you not getting back into promoting what we're talking about, body shaming? And so, people feeling that they are not enough because of their body size. Hmm. That's a very good question. Um, body shaming is, is horrific any time. We don't want to body shame anybody. But equally as if someone is severely underweight, they're unhealthy, just the same way anyone who's severely overweight is unhealthy. So you wouldn't walk to someone who's anorexic and say, Love, oh, you know what, you know, you're, you're, you're normal, you're fine. Why do everyone tell anorexic people, eat food, eat food, mm. right? So they can get to a normal weight because it's unhealthy. It's unhealthy. Just like underweight people lose their periods, they, they're not fertile, they're not able to have children. Equally, people who have a lot of extra weight have Same problems. PCOS, they have infertility issues, mm -hmm. they're not able to get pregnant. So I'm not talking about body shaming in, its, in itself. Body shaming is bad in itself. But here, the conversation is about health. Mm -hmm. And I feel there's a, there's a time when body shaming... Um, it's not a, it's not body sh shaming. We have to have a realistic conversation about what is healthy and what isn't. Okay. And ultimately, if you have a lot of extra weight, you're unhealthy. That's the bottom line. In your association, do you have a communications department? I am the communications department. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why is it so expensive? <laughs> 500,000 shillings to swallow a balloon? So the endoscopic balloon actually goes for 350,000. Mm. Um, the costs associated with these procedures and bariatric surgery is 850,000. So yes, there is a steep cost. The cost associated with the procedures, first of all, is quality. Um, and the, the, our doctors themselves, they have to be highly qualified. Um, the tools we're using, all right, we are buying tools from Europe, from North America. These, these are tools that are now subject to the dollar uh, to the lo dollar rates, the to the fluctuations. Yes. So definitely we have a lot of extra associated costs that we try to put down as much as possible, but it's at some point beyond our control. So, yeah. And medical, the technology. Medical processes are expensive. Mm. Correct. Yes.
And that's why insurance would come in. That's pre precisely right. But that's also where the board, if the board has categorized, does not clearly categorize this mm. as uh, worthy, or not, not worthy, but as, as a medical a intervention, medical whatever intervention, then insurance will not look at it that way. That's why I asked about the communication. Mm. These people who would be your partners. But thank you very much, ladies, for joining us. It's been an interesting conversation. It's been a healthy one. <laughs> thank you for having us. The pleasure. two ladies are from the Nairobi Bariatric Center. Jerry Kubani is a nutritionist and Anastasia Shunika is the operations manager. Keep it here for more conversations. If you go, any questions, how do they find you on social media? Nairobi Bariatric is our hashtag. Nairobi Bariatric? Yes. Okay. That's it. Get more uh, information from them. Keep it here for more conversations. Coming up in the next hour, good morning, it's 8 a.m. up your life. Good morning, this is Newsworm Dennis Aceto. As mule leaders have said that all is said for today's Abbasaba rallies that will be held across the country, Nairobi Odia Party Chairperson Jojo Lado says the main rally will be held at Kamkunj Grounds elsewhere for Malakipi Governor Niriti Muridi, aged Kenyans who feel burdened by the cost of living to be part of the rallies. Wa Kenya wenzangu, kokote ulipo katika jamhuri yetu ya Kenya, kama wewe wasikia uchungu wa bei gali ya maisha, Kama unasikia uchungu wa mafuta petroli unayolipa bei gali. Kama unasikia uchungu wa chakula kuwa bei gali. Wewe siku ya saba saba jitokeze mahali huko na upige kelele hapo. Various civil society groups have also come out to say that they'll take part in the protest as activist Boniface Akach. Revolutionaries as well as patriotic Kenyans urge Kenyans to turn out in large numbers. It is the duty of today's generation to realize that they are the bridge between our forefathers' past generation and our children's children's future generation. And that the gap in access to justice and freedom across generations can only be bridged through relentless struggle. For our failure to do so means that our children's children will go through the same repression and humiliation that our forefathers underwent. We continue to follow up on this developing story. Be sure that Newswire will be bringing you the very latest in our subsequent news bulletin now. The government has designed a standardized training program for private security companies as part of the reforms agenda in the industry. This marks a crucial step forward in establishing clear industry standards and a recognized code of ethics for guards in an effort to prepare them efficiently navigate the complexities of the evolving security landscape. Interior Principal Secretary Raymond Omolo has described the curriculum as a product of a highly consultative process among key stakeholders with a focus on elevating the professionalism and competency of private security guards in the country. And three senior managers from a Limuru-based company have been arrested in connection with an incident in which female employees were allegedly forced to undress at work over a disposed sanitary towel saga. Police boss Philip Mwania says those arrested will appear in court today. Tulipata report kutoka kwa mama wanafanya kwa kampuni inaitwa Brown. Pamba wakitoka kazi walizalazimishwa kutoa nguo. Waangaliwa kama wako na hevi. Ambayo ni kitendo ilikuwa mbaya na ya unyama sana. Ndizi ya noziezi waliweza kuenda kwa hiyo kampuni na tukashika kwa mama watatu ambayo ni management. Tuko na wako kwa sale, statement ziliandikwa na wanaenda kotini. The Bungoma County government has been urged to employ more agricultural extension officers as one of the ways to strengthen coffee farming in the area. Speaking in Chwele, new KPCU boss Charles Mutili said that most of the farmers do not have knowledge about coffee farming, which he says continues to be the reason behind poor harvest. Some farmers have however criticized political leaders for failing to protect the interest of farmers. <laughs> Weshima wetu especially kwa pande hii hawaja zikia sana mkulima wa kahawa. Wanatuonekania saa zile tumepatikana na shida. Sasa hizi mkulima uh, mheshimiwa mmoja akipatikana hapa, tuwasiliane na yeye mpaka kwa gramu. Nishangaa sana David President anaenda kwa nyumba ya mkulima. Na hapa unaweza pata hata vile jamii anaweza katazwa aziende kwa mkulima. Eh kwa hivyo tunaomba tukaheshimike kama wakulima wa kahawa, cause mnajua kahawa inamaanisha nini kwa uchumi. 
Police in Bumet County have arrested a 30-year-old man who allegedly murdered his father and injured his mother after he was denied money to buy a motorcycle. The suspect, Victor Langat, is said to have hit his mother and struck his 55-year-old father to death using a piece of wood after the latter tried to rescue the mother at their home in Chiptagum in Sotik sub-county. According to Balik sub-location assistant chief Wesley Langat, the suspect had demanded a share of money attained from the sale of a piece of land by his parents in order to use it to purchase a motorbike for his own use. After the parents turned down his demand, Langat got agitated, picked a piece of wood and hit his mother. Now, Kenya is facing a 79% climate change financing gap amidst increasing global warming effects that are causing havoc in developing countries. The African Center for Technology Studies Climate Change Program lead, Dr. Joel Onyango, stated that the situation is headed to a worse state if nothing is done to finance adaptation to climate change effects. He said many Kenyans have little security against intense climatic effects. They have few resources, reserves, poor housing housing and depend on natural resources for their living. This is News I'm Dennis Aseto. Good morning. One oh two point five Spice FM Kisumu. Okay, so a few minutes after uh, 8 o'clock now and a little bit of traffic still. But uh, as is the practice with Fridays, we probably will not see too much of it around the city. We're looking at the Eastern Bypass and some traffic building up there as you're coming in from North Airport Road, past Cabanas, out towards uh, Outer Ring at the junction. It's also busy on Gong Road, inbound, and we're seeing some traffic also on the Thicker Super Highway coming in from Kiambu Road and uh, Limuru Road onto um, Wa- Wangari Mathaiway. So that's happening there. But again, nothing too crazy, nothing too busy. We keep an eye on things, guys. Spice of MKE on Twitter. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom, in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room. It is. The only way to start. eight on the Saba Saba day. How are you doing? It's a cold, cold morning. Wherever you are tuned in from, Asante Sana for joining us. We are live every morning, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Spice FM, on KTN Home. We live stream the show on YouTube and Facebook. And we are here having Kenya's biggest conversation. Kenya's biggest conversation also works very well when we talk about bringing smiles to children's faces like our guests for the next hour are really braving and smiling daniel juma is the executive director at global peace foundation kenya and dr tony divine is the international vice president for education at global peace foundation usa gentlemen good morning good morning good morning kenya's biggest conversation karibuni sana daniel i see you're really smiling yeah. I'm happy to see yeah. you guys again. <laughs> <laughs> and I grew Welcome taller, back. She yeah. <laughs> She's, he's growing taller. He grew taller since uh, last time. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hi, hi, and you agree. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Now that you're smiling like this, Daniel, yeah. uh, let me tell you that there are, not, there are some children who are not smiling. Okay. And that's because they don't have access to free water. As we talk about what you do and all, yes. um, Colgate would like you, next time you're thinking of shopping, whether you do the shopping directly yeah. or whether you do shopping by proxy, mm. <laughs> ensure that your shopping basket has Colgate from Nivas. 
I do that even tomorrow. Yeah. Uh. Because part of the money that buys Colgate is mm. going towards sinking some 30 water wells wow. in several parts of the country that have been identified by Colgate and Colgate's partners. Okay. And those water wells are going to benefit children and communities around schools. 150,000 people. Mm. More than that. Okay. Just because they've noticed there's some communities that don't have access to water. They've got a school. Mm. Imagine a school with no water. Yeah, it's the really sanitation facilities mm. and there's no water. So children are therefore not getting access to hand washing facilities. Yeah. Disease. Big problem. Big problem. Mm. So if we actually just supplied water mm. that is accessible to this school community, mm. we have sorted out very many things at a go. Amazing what Colgate is doing. Yes, indeed. Karibu mm. Nisani to Kenya's biggest conversation. City has the day's proverb. As mm -hmm. we talk, you'll tell us about the Global Peace Foundation and our today's topic, which is improving the quality of education in Kenya. Yes, our proverbs for the whole of this week have been from the country of Libya. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, interesting thing, Libya is a very interesting country, very rich history. Uh, of significance, uh, the proverbs. Uh, some of the proverbs that I mentioned... You know, you, you, when you research these things, you find a whole host of proverbs and the ones that speak to you most, well, the ones that spoke to me most from Libya were the ones I couldn't make sense mm -hmm. out of. Mm -hmm. Some I did. Some of the others I couldn't make sense. I figured I might as well say them and let's see if other people who hear the proverbs can make sense out of it. This one I made sense of. He who is to be hanged can insult the Pasha. He who is to be hanged can insult the Pasha. Mm. Okay. Dr. Tony? Yes, sir. Hi, Eric. <laughs> who is the Pasha? <laughs> <Let's start here. laughs> Question number 1A. Okay. <laughs> Five marks. Five marks. <laughs> um, You're talking about education. That's what you do. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, um, uh, I just want to um, focus in here on uh, what we're doing tomorrow right which mm. is the or today actually which no, is before the that the tr yeah the, the proverb okay right yeah. just trying to understand your interpretation of the proverb he who city he who is to be hanged can insult the pasha yeah who's the pasha city i think let's the just, pasha yeah. is a leader a high-ranking government official mm -hmm. somebody who has power and authority mm -hmm. yeah. somebody who can determine whether you live or die mm -hmm. yeah. so now, the point at which you get at to when you can actually decide to insult this person, mm. what do you think has happened? You have nothing to lose. When you have nothing to lose, you can say anything. Yes. You, you can insult the, the boss. The king. <laughs> because you're dying anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah? yeah. So the one who has nothing to lose is dangerous. He's basically. dangerous. Mm -hmm. Can do anything. Can do anything. They've yeah. got no limits. Absolutely. Nothing holding them back. Absolutely. So don't make sure that the person who's next to you has something to lose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or else. Mm -hmm. Or else. Or else. Mm -hmm. Okay. So introduce us to Global Peace Foundation. Kenya. Let's start with Kenya. Thank you. Yes. So thank you very much for having us again. So we are the Global Peace Foundation. Mm. Uh, we are international nonprofit. Our headquarters in the in, in the United States of America. We have more than uh, uh, twenty five chapters around the world. Uh, we believe that peace is not just the absence of war. That peace is structural, and uh, the things we do are to address the issues that affect humanity. Uh, in Kenya, especially, we have been focusing on education uh, as a tool for peace building. So we believe that education is uh, the most important weapon, like Nelson Mandela once said, mm. that it is the most important weapon that you can use to change the world. So we have been working in this country since the year 2010 to transform education so that education can be the solution provider to the problems that we face in Kenya, in Africa, and the world. And um, indeed, education is critical because, um, and I believe that uh, uh, especially countries that have, you know, high illiteracy levels are the ones that are, that are more prone to violence, eh? especially the kind of violence, the kind of problems, instabilities that you see, especially during elections. You know, if people are 
literate, if people are well educated and they understand issues, they understand how to sort issues, um, not necessarily by fist. If they go through education, mm -hmm. that it is indeed, it, it would be easier for us to solve our problems without having to to go, you know, fisting, you know, you beating know, one another. You know, I, I'm going to actually have to simply query yes. that definition you've just provided. Yes. Would we say that the French have a literacy issue? I, 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 I wouldn't say that. But again, um, especially those who are going through uh, the violence uh, that you see right now. It's not always good to assume that everyone that uh, is partaking in that problem have uh, or, or don't have Ill Ill illiteracy issues. So, is so. it a question of literacy or knowledge? Because you can be literate, yes. but you lack a certain specific knowledge. On I think it's things. knowledge. It's knowledge. More than knowledge. Because those yeah. people who are now destroying property in France I think the you know they, they are responding to an issue. Mm. Um, are they really responding to an issue? You see, the, this is the question that is asked. Yes, that's why I bring in knowledge. Yes, because the very things that sometimes they are involved in destroying are probably things that are of use to them as well. Yes, absolutely. So you so. have to ask the question: Are you considering that you're actually damaging things that? You yourself, the trains that they use, yes, that you the infrastructure that, that they use. you benefit from. So, if they only had a retrospect, yes, and asked, is this really good for us? Mm. So that's where education comes in, and not just education in school, also civic education, so that people are able to understand the real issues, you know, issues of national transformation, issues that um, that are facing their country. So, if you, for example, respond to, like Lumbo and say. Res responding to a, a mosquito by a hammer. Mm. I mean, mm. it doesn't make sense. You know, this, and it's very, it's a tragedy that this boy was, ki was killed by police mm. uh, in France. But um, I, 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 I think it is too much. Eh? The way the people are responding to it is a little bit, uh, you know, it, it's too much eh? and it should be addressed. Yeah. The importance of education. Very yes. important. Uh. Dr. Tony. You are the International Vice President for Education at Global Peace Foundation USA. So what is it that you do as a foundation focusing on education? Do you train teachers? Do you build schools? Do you publish books? Do you do all of the above plus more? Yeah, <clears throat> fundamentally in the education area, we focus on capacity building, right, of educators. So teachers, school principals, superintendents, ministries of education are our stakeholders, right? The ultimate stakeholder are the students themselves, right? But we focus on the the adults, right? The ones who are actually in the classrooms, running the systems and so on. <clears throat> and you know, we use this terminology transformation very intentionally, right? So in most conferences, most events, most discussions, dialogues that are going on in edu education today, um, uh, they focus on systems, on structures, and so on, and they're really missing out on the essence of transformation. So we actually have a theory of transformation, mm -hmm. not just a theory of change. You can change something, and you it can change back in an instant, right? So transformation is a fundamental shift, right, in the way we go about things. And uh, the, the focus, the essence of transformation is transforming people, the adults. So starting with the educators, the teachers, the principals, and so on, the more they show up as a better version of themselves today than they did yesterday, mm. that actually becomes a driver in creating an amazing culture in classrooms, an engaging culture where students love to be there, right? Day in and day out. And where they thrive, where they're inspired to continuously learn and be better themselves, be good people ultimately, right? And that's actually how the students actually transform themselves. They're always watching the adults. Yep always watching the adults, right? So this is not something you teach with the blackboard. Mm. This is about modeling, right? More than anything else. Yeah. And then we can achieve real transformative outcomes. We're preparing a generation of young people who can actually contribute 
to pass waves of national transformation, for example, here in Kenya, to make Kenya a great nation, right, over the next 10, 15, 20 years. Not just a, not just an economical, uh, you know, nation that moves up to the middle class, but a great nation, right? Mm -hmm. And also to prepare students to be really future ready in a very... Um, rapidly changing world, right? An ambiguous and certain kind of world, right? And uh, I would mm. like to add here that the essence of this transformation mm. is the development of character. So since 2010, since we started our work here, Global Peace Foundation has emphasized over and over and over again for the past 13 years, we're literally the only ones mm. talking about this, right? how important and how central character is, right? So character is a nation builder, and it's the antidote to corruption. Corruption is a nation killer, and that, you know, it kills nations. Character actually helps to build nations, mm -hmm. right? So we're putting a premium on that, and how that links to conscience and to spiritual consciousness, it's all about this alignment, right? to actually uh, do good, yeah. to do righteous things, right? To love others and so on. I, I'm interested to know how exactly you do this because even as you talked about the essence of transformation and looking at the educators mm -hmm. and ensuring that there are incentives to make them keep improving yes. their knowledge and skills, that is how an education system is structured. Mm -hmm. That teachers are trained, you go into teacher training, you're trained to be a teacher to handle students and you are encouraged to continue going for uh, continuous training and that's mm -hmm. how you get promotions. Mm -hmm. So by the time you're getting to a senior principal, you've actually gone through many training sessions. Mm -hmm. So how different are you then? Yeah, so, you know, <coughs> we, we have a real issue in the global education world, right? It's not just here in Kenya, it's international, it's global. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is like um, uh, a kind of a miscue, a misunderstanding on the context of our world today. Our world is changing rapidly, right? Mm. So, for example, you know, just 123 years ago, knowledge was doubling every 100 years, right? But last year, in 2022, knowledge was doubling every 12 hours. So the current education system you know, there's kind of a joke going around, right? Mm. That we have 21st century kids in classrooms taught by 20th century adults on a 19th century curriculum on an 18th century calendar, right? So the whole thing <laughs> is out of date, right? It's kind of a joke, but it's actually tr the truth, right? Mm. So we have, to, we, have to, we have to have a paradigm shift mm. in education if we're going to actually help uh, society nation building, civilization itself, right? Mm. And it has to focus on a new foundation, not on knowledge acquisition, but actually on the cultivation of character, right? And everything associated with that, and building on that to guide the development of relationships. Uh, you were t Daniel was sharing about the issues of conflict, where, you know, uh, we do peace building, not just in the absence of conflict, but it's about building trust, building great relationships. And on top of that, character has to guide skills like creativity, entrepreneurship. These are value neutral. They need to be guided by good values and character. And regarding knowledge, mm. it's no longer about what you know. It's actually about what you do what you, with what you know, how you apply. right? How is that the application of knowledge to solve problems and to be a value, to add value to, to a given situation, right? Yeah. This is interesting as this conversation is coming at a time where a lot, at, well, at the very least, is being said about an education system. Mm -hmm. Because what we're saying here is that what needs to happen is that there needs to be a complete, total rewiring Yes. thinking in order to deliver an education that's going to help our children bring them and not even just children those who are in whatever level of education yes that there needs to be a rewiring not just in terms of time that we're living in a totally different time today than what people who were educated 20 years ago were right it's on this day actually that we see a report coming out uh, from what was called a working party mm -hmm. about how education will or will not change in this country. We're talking about decategorization, we're talking about funding, we're talking about all sorts of things. But we're dealing with brick and mortar 
mm. as opposed to this rewiring that mm. you're speaking of that we can deliver a curriculum we can provide the funds we mm. can uh, hire teachers pay them a little bit more in terms of a mm. salary mm. but we're saying that if we don't change the intrinsic issues that are responsible for the delivery of this education then we can do all this but uh, it's going nowhere is that what we're saying and that's basically what we're saying it's like you know the, the problem is that there's a preoccupation with systems with structures and so on right and we need to actually um th these are important things I'm not saying we have to we, we can ignore them we can't we have to deal with these things but that's not the primary thing we have to focus on foundational things first and foremost right which is this te tectonic shift in our thinking and in the way um education has to be approached so you know Basically, the fundamentals of education has been pre to prepare people for a living, mm, right? Mm. You know, you go out, you have some kind of basic knowledge, you can earn a living, provide for your family, and so on, right? Mm -hmm. So, yes, it has to do that, but more fundamentally, right, education and the, the influence that educators and teachers can have on the life arc of their students is actually preparing them for a life. <coughs> so, the life arc right the mindset has to shift from how you perform in a final exam to how you're going to actually be successful and prosperous and live a purposeful and meaningful life you know a, t a good teacher can have that kind of impact on their students all of us here remember our one favorite teacher right mm. and it was that kind of person why can't all our teachers be like that right why can't they daniel because uh, you talk about focusing on one big exam is very interesting because mm -hmm. the reason why a new curriculum was introduced in Kenya mm -hmm. was to take away this attention from mm -hmm. you focusing on this one exam and mm -hmm. look at wholesome learning, yes. right? Again, I bring in the working party, CT's favorite party recently, and the removal of this attention on the exam mm -hmm. is something that was then fundamental to this new curriculum. But now we've seen that the party has now reversed those roles and said, you know what? If this draft is a, is a, approved, mm. we're going to put a lot more attention on your final exam, on this big exam, because mm. the scores, the numbers matter. And uh, the other assessments in terms of the knowledge that you've then been able to grasp, mm. maybe will take less points. But yeah. the big exam matters a lot. And mm. here we are saying that we need to change that. Yeah. How how would that happen in uh, Kenya, and why is it important for it? To I do? know, I know, and we have had this in uh, conversation when we, when uh, the reform of uh, education started. Th this was the fundamental issue in this uh, re review. We were saying that um, y you know you cannot judge a child uh, by the result of just um, a one hour exam. Um, Maybe during that exam, maybe he had issues. Maybe he had. Uh, maybe it wasn't a good day. Maybe it wasn't a good day. Yeah. Uh, maybe he was stressed, and he was able to not do well just that one day. Mm. But throughout his time in school, during the eight years or during the four years, if it's high school, he has been a good student. That's why uh, continuous assessment uh, uh, w was seen to be a key. If, for example, these kids are uh, continually assessed. So that you see, this good this, this child has been a good boy in class. This, he has been cooperative. He has been uh, disciplined, and he has been doing his homework in, on time. So these are things that should be able to earn this uh, student's marks that should uh, be able to count. That's why during our time, I think living certificates was also very very important during those days mm. because it says. Who are you? How are you when you are in school? Describes your character. It, your character. Uh, those mm. things yeah. didn't describe anyone's character. <laughs> 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 mm, 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 mm. Two okay, lines. Yeah. Yeah. Very uh, intelligent. Hardworking. Hard hard uh, <laughs> yeah. How exactly does that tell any anything it, it, about it? It can add another line. It should, was yeah, a I school captain. captain. Yes. Was a, was a student a leader. Defect. That tells uh, you something about that person. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm just I trying to be polite. No, not was a rabble rouser. You don't want to put that. You don't where I'm going with this, yes, huh? yes, you are spot on. But if we are talking about students, mm. we are actually talking about those who teach them. Yes. So then, should we focus on how those who teach are taught? 
for how they are trained. Absolutely. And uh, that yes. brings me to your first question. Yes. Why can these teachers be the same? Or why can they be? Uh, it's very, very important uh, uh, that um, the teacher who appears in the, in the classroom, it's very, very key because, uh, like Tony said, we all remember that one teacher. I remember my teacher, the teacher who shaped my English. He was very, very critical. Spelling mistakes was a big <laughs> problem. <laughs> Grammatical mistake, that would attract a cane. And um, um, I remember, you know, we, we grew up with that kind of um, uh, discipline. Yeah. So the teacher who comes to class, if, I, if I'm a teacher and I come to, uh, come to class shabbily dressed or drunk, mm. smelling alcohol <laughs> or... Um, you know, it's, it's terrible because uh, what am I showing this? Someone has entrusted you with these children. Like now my children are in class. I have entrusted someone. I'm paying dearly mm. for someone to take care of these children. And yet he shows up in, in class, maybe drunk or maybe... No, not it, at all. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy. So the people who teach our kids, mm. uh, as, and as parents, we must be keen on knowing who is it that is teaching our child. Mm. Perhaps a few who steps even before then. Yes. How we recruit them because absolutely, and the, the, in the, Kenya, the, yes, let me just say this you know, this is a problem we have had. Um, if you go to certain countries like Finland, Korea, or even the USA, to become even a kindergarten teacher is very, very you require it's a rigorous uh, process, uh, yes, you require highly educated, you know, you will be you'll have to be highly qualified, highly educated to become a teacher. But what do we do in Kenya? You know, you find that people who maybe wanted to become a lawyer, they wanted, and they didn't uh, meet those standards, huh? mm -hmm. then they are recruited as a BOM or a trained teach. teachers, and trained teachers. Mm -hmm. And do you know how much people, these people are being paid as BOM teachers? Mm -hmm. They paid 20,000 shillings, paltry. 20,000 uh, 20, shillings. 20,000 is a lot. And 7,000, 10,000, 7,500 shillings is yes. what is paid to ECD teachers today. Yes. yes, and they come to the class unmotivated. They, 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 they come to class really, really, um, you know, they, they're sad, reject, mm. dejected. Mm. And do you expect this person to be able to, to mentor your children? No, it can't happen. So in the, this review, what I think about this review, how we recruit teachers is very, very critical. I believe that the teacher should be, the teacher is perhaps the most important profession. And it should be, you know, very, very, the teacher should be the most qualified, you know, because the teachers teach doctors, teachers teach they teach professors, everybody. even presidents. Everybody. And yet you require very low marks, you know, for them to become. But, you know, you cannot become a doctor in this country if you don't have those highest, you know, A's or B's. Eh? Mm -hmm. So it's really, really, uh, we must get our priorities right. So how we recruit these teachers is very, very important. How we motivate them is very, very critical if we are to attain uh, the results that we want in our education. You know, Time for that break. A break, huh? Yes. Okay. It's 29 minutes to nine. Our guests this morning are talking about improving the quality of education in Kenya. And on that note, let me just plug in the standard today. This is the headline in the standard today. Ruto's radical CBC shakeup. The standard has uh, gotten some insights into what the what's called the Presidential Working Party, Party on, on Education, education reform, reform in Kenya. Kenya. The report and what they are due to discuss with the president. Buy a copy and get all this information. Our guests, Daniel Juma is Executive Director of Global Peace Foundation Kenya and Dr. Tony Devine is the International Vice President for Education at Global Peace Foundation USA. Back shortly. Have you watched it? It premiered yesterday. It's one of the show max, the latest show max original. It's called what? It's called Faithless, and it's a ten-part crime drama series set in the aftermath of a heist gone bad. It follows four church members who are drawn into a life of crime and violence when their chama is turned into a money laundering operation by a vicious crime lord. You gotta love it. It's Faithless. It's the original title, the latest by Showmax. Log on to Showmax.com and figure out this wonderful story that's on folding every week ct started watching it yesterday mm. and uh, he'll tell us mm. the experience star studded casts mm. rosemary aware of tabasamu a real musician from pepeta beatrice moai who's acted in pa mm. uh, fatima mohammed who's in kina alex kamau of volume morris mwangi of famous mm. and others let's go and watch it mm. this is the situation room the only way to start your day
When you're impeached, you're impeached. When you're sentenced, you're sentenced. Madam Chief Justice. Until the sentence is uh, set aside. Ukibeba vitu kwa roho utakufa. If you carry things in your heart, you will die. <laughs> You've had the luxury of living for 50 years <laughs> and you cannot still explain yourself. Surely, surely. Oh my God. The reason for which you went to school yeah. and then got, got, you know, got that experience, yes. that reason must be painful. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this level. Shape up oh, or ship out. Levels don't change. No, no. Yeah, See, it's about shipping ship. out. You know my business partner here. Yeah. Shipping out. Are we talking about the ship in the bathtub? <laughs> or... <laughs> or the ship man? <laughs> I don't know what I love you to tell us a story of they in school and they've been told to write a composition about a ship. This classmate raises a hand. Teacher, are you talking about a ship ship or a ship and goat? <laughs> <laughs> the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. It's cloudy Friday at 12 degrees, highs of 17 and lows of 11 in Nairobi. It's cloudy at 15 in Nakuru, going to highs of 22. And we'll see highs of 17 in a cloudy Nyeri at 13. It's cloudy at 15 in Eldoret, highs of 20 and lows of 13. Cloudy at 23 in Mombasa, highs of 28. And we'll see lows of 24 in a sunny Malindi at 24. Currently going to highs of 28, 19 and cloudy. Temperatures dropping in Kisumu, highs of 27. 26 will be the high in Kakamega, where it's currently cloudy at 18. It's Ali Sunny at 19 in Kampala, highs of 24 and 28 will be the high in a mostly cloudy Dar es Salaam at 23. It's 7 and clear in Johannesburg, highs of, 20, of 17 and lows of 6. While at 25, Lagos is cloudy, highs of 30 and lows of 25. Kinshasa is clear at 20 with highs of 23, 33. Chilled Spice. Not too difficult a time with traffic this morning. Most parts of the city flowing free and smooth. Even if you are on the thicker superhighway today, you don't even have to use the service lanes. Just imagine going from point A to point B without stopping. Traffic hour has not even really begun, talk less of it ending. Uh, not having too much of an issue with traffic today. Ah, today's that day. When things will happen? Well, we'll wait and see, right? But uh, you won't have to contend with traffic, at least not for now. Let's see if there's an ebb and flow of traffic this morning. Let's talk on Spice MKE on Twitter and keep things moving whichever way today. Spice FM, Malindi. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Juma, both from the Global Peace Foundation, CT, you had a question. Well, yes, I was actually juxtaposing. I was thinking, you know, when you talked about the French, you mm. know, where my mind traveled the French Revolution. Mm. And my mind traveled the French Revolution and what caused it. Some of the events that led to the French Revolution, believe it or not, was the American Civil War. Not the other way around. Mm. Just like the Second World War was one of the things that brought about the Mau Mau because people went to the second, First World War and the Second World War mm. and that experience opened their eyes to all sorts of things. Now, mm. come Second World War and the period after that, in Dr. Tony's uh, neck of the woods, the term baby boomers or boomers came into mm. being. Mm. They are noted for one specific thing. They looked at traditions that had been there and the way their parents and people went about things and they said, nah, this is not working for them. When you heard of flower people, the hippie movement, mm. that was the expression of rejecting certain things that they had seen over time. But it brought about a complete overhaul mm. of the way people did things in his neck of the woods. Mm. Yeah. Now, we have something similar, unfortunately, it's, unf it, 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 it's negative. Because we seem to have evolved to a point where the way forward seems to be to find an avenue to be corrupt and yeah. to try and make as much money as you possibly can doing whatever it is you need to do. Now, when you look at the sort of money that is allocated for education in our country and then you look at what is actually done, mm. you don't need to be very good at maths to realize that all that money doesn't go into education. Mm. Because if it did, mm. 
and in the manner in which it is suggested it would, then there would be phenomenal changes. Mm. So, when you come into a situation such as ours with your eyes wide open, mm. how do you begin the process of bringing about the sort of change that I've just been describing as a background where you get an entire generation that looks at the way their parents and probably their grandparents did things and they say, no, no, this is not the way to do things because if we continue this way, we will not really go far with this. Mm -hmm. So that we can catapult an entire new generational change. How do you do this with the thrust that you have in education? You want to go, Tony? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this is a great, great, great question here, right? <laughs> and I, I do think we, we have, um, especially here in Kenya, right, in Africa, there is like an unprecedented opportunity right now, right, mm -hmm. with, with a new generation um, who will make a commitment. They'll make, you know, they're going to make a choice, right, a decision not to engage in corruption, right, but instead to actually put an emphasis on building their character on literally on a daily basis, right, in alignment with their conscience, in alignment with spiritual consciousness, because that is actually what will catapult Kenya into um, a great nation going forward, and that is what will attract foreign investment. It will actually uh, uh, it will actually facilitate the proper due diligence, right, and governance over uh, funding, money, etc., 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 right. But as long as corruption, the elephant in the room, remains, um, Kenya will not move forward. To, uh, to Vision 2030, right, and the aspirations that uh, people have. So we have to deal with this elephant in the room. And, you know, um, I, I heard yesterday that by 2050, um, one in four people on Earth are going to be a are Africans, not African-Americans, but from the continent of Africa, right? So Africans are going to have a huge influence in the world in 25 years' time. The question is, what kind of influence, mm. right? So, you know, think about it for a second. The, in 25 years, the entire school population, primary, secondary, college, this is from one day old to 25 years old, they're going to be running the country, right? This is a whole generation that's in the school system right now, right? Yeah. So it's like, this is why in our, in our event today, our Transforming Education Summit, we brought together stakeholders from multiple sectors, right, to put our heads together on what we can do. This is urgent, right? Mm. We have an urgent mission in front of us. Teaching is really a mission. It's not a job, right? Mm. So what can we do to actually help develop the character, right, values, great relationships, and so on? Uh, so to make sure that this generation that you're speaking about, right, mm. can actually set Kenya, East Africa, Africa on a trajectory of great prosperity, right? And that can actually influence the entire world. You know, the opportunity you have right now is unprecedented, right? And we cannot be going on as we have. We, it, need, it needs, uh, you know, a paradigm shift. And we need to start this, like, literally today, right? We can't wait till next year or the year after. And it's going to be too add, late. Just to add on that, I think um, the educators must continue learning. You know, we cannot say that we cannot stop learning. Everybody in the ecosystem of education must learn and relearn, continue learning, because uh, education keeps changing. You know, today, uh, for example, with uh, artificial intelligence, for example, everything. If you're a teacher, everything you're going to be teaching those students in class is already on Chat GPT. You know, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence. So. And we, we could be discussing now what is going to be the role of the teacher in, in future, you know? Mm. Because then, if I, am, uh, I have my, chi my kids and I have ChatGPT, uh, you know, ChatGPT will, will tell them how, for example, to do their homework, how to write an essay, everything that maybe they would have wanted to learn, to learn. So what is going to be the role of the teacher moving forward? So even teachers... Uh, must be very careful that they are not displaced, you mm. know, in, uh, you know, moving forward. Because, um, and I said this in one of the meetings that I had, that artificial intelligence is here to stay. You know, just like before, when email came, 
some people thought emails would go away mm. these things are here to stay so what is going to be the role of the teacher moving forward to teach the machine uh, and, mm. yes. and not just even in <laughs> education mm. even in um, in the workplace do you know that um, <laughs> the news presenters uh, in future will be at fish and a robot will be reading news there's something i want to understand let's focus on education <laughs> Artificial. <laughs> I'm sorry. And it exists because some human being created it. Yes, it's some human being it is behind. It will support. Yes. It will help. Yes. It will make certain things better, yes. easier. Yes. But it will not be able to replace. Replace the human. No, it will not. I, I know uh, that. We have to be careful here on this one, right? Because there are people in the artificial intelligence um, spectrum, right, that actually want to make general artificial intelligence on an equal footing with biological intelligence right mm. this is a real thing yep. and th this is where you know uh, this is where you know uh, the people who are actually um, training the ai have to be people of good character yeah, right yeah, and absolutely. have you know yeah. they're, they're, the ai is being trained right yep. and you can train it to lie you can mm -hmm. it can be corrupt as well right yep. The problem with the AI is that it is the biggest disruptor we've ever seen, right? So it can actually scale, and it can actually scale a very good idea. It can actually provide a lot of good. It's really an extension of ourselves, but it can also scale a very bad idea, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And it can cause incredible, a real mess, right, to humanity. So. You know, this is where like our students, our educators have to be members of the Wide Awake Club and not just take these technologies for granted that this is the absolute truth here. You've got to be asking critical questions. Who's training the AI, <laughs> right? Mm. And, you know, we have to dig a little bit deeper here and not just take things for granted. So we want to really, uh, more than ever before, we need you know, educators who are working on their own character, right? And improving themselves on a day-by-day -day basis. It's not just continuous learning, but also continuous development of yourself. So you're showing up as a better version of yourself tomorrow than you did today. Mm -hmm. Then the students will emulate that. This is really the front line right now, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Even as we talk about, you know, character and how it must be developed in order to continue to mm. deliver this, mm. it is clear, though, that all of these things work in a cycle, work yes. in an almost kind of continuum. Because, yes, you can say that I am here, it's a calling in, in, in teaching, right? Mm. But at the same time, you have a life to lead and there is the compensation that is necessary and is almost a catalyst of what you will do. Mm -hmm. We can talk about character development, but at the end of the day, people need to survive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that is one of the things that they will take into consideration as who gives them the best in terms of compensation. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. likely what they're going to gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. um, and as I think about this and I ask myself, <coughs> are we ready? And I'm not just talking about Kenya, I'm talking in as Africa as a whole. We're talking about new technology. We're talking about new ideas. We're talking about new things. But are we ready to embrace what comes along with that? Are we even ready to get into it? People, it has become a buzzword, but COVID was an eye-opener, especially in education, mm. whereby you could not meet face-to-face. -face. The teacher could not speak to the children directly. And we still were not able to deliver an education to these kids. We were not. We can say we tried. We can talk about Zoom until the cows come home, but it did not work. It did not work because the infrastructure and the will did not exist. And I can argue and say until today, it still does not exist to a certain level. Mm. Yeah. Let me just so say. what is it that needs to happen to mm. get us from... Because we can talk about the technology, mm. Daniel, you know very well. Yes. You can talk about AI today mm. in a school whereby they're talking about swimming and there is no swimming pool. Mm. Where the infrastructure does not exist, how are you going to motivate a teacher mm. who is teaching certain things mm. in certain subject areas mm. and has a counterpart in a city somewhere else, not just in Kenya, in another part of the world, and they're supposed to deliver the yeah. same level. How? I think the foundation here is very critical. And when it comes to Kenya, like a, an issue you alluded to, um, 
that you have a teacher who is coming to class and uh, has issues to think about. Uh, yep. You know, I'll give. I'll be very direct. Mm. I, our county government. Mm. Do you know how much they're paying ECD teachers? Yes, how seven thousand five hundred and huh? sixty. Shillings. Seven thousand five hundred oh. and sixty. Yeah, so that is absurd. That should stop right away because the ECD teacher is the one giving the foundation, mm. teaching this child how to talk, how to write. You know, so these are the people that should be remunerated better than others. Mm. You understand? So this is a, a, a calling. As we do this today, it's a calling to the county governments that they need to step up. They need to recruit our ECD teachers properly, pay them well. And if they can't do that, I would want the Minister of Education to take over. You know, this should revert back to the Minister of Education, not to county government, because some county government do not see mm. the, the importance of these ECD teachers. National government was not better. Yeah. Remember, I, 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 how, much, how much the counties are paying is an improvement. Oh, really? Of what yeah. the, the national government was paying ECD, nursery school teachers. So, but anyway, <laughs> so it's very, very critical um, that, um, that, that, that we look at the whole ecosystem, mm. but not just even the teachers, the MOE must also you know uh, uh continue re learning and relearning yeah but must also be people of good character if you put people good people in the ministry of education mm -hmm. that means our funds are secure that means that the money that you talked about billions of shillings huh, are going to be allocated and you're going to ensure that that money reaches mm -hmm. where it's supposed to to be you look at the issue of uh, the building of classrooms when cbc came you know i know there's a lot of money that were allocated uh, to ensure that these classrooms are built mm -hmm. you know you need mm -hmm. good people to implement government policy to ensure that that money that was allocated actually reaches you know where it's supposed to be so how do we get these good people and what is good how do we define good don't they exist character is a social construct mm -hmm. character is, uh, is, is is key and maybe tony can <laughs> yeah. answer that yeah this is something that i all of us have to work on right mm. so you know it's not just the students but it's it's really like the adults the educators they're the ones we're focusing on right and you know it, it's like this is this is intentional work you know it's it's a priority you have to wake up every morning and say hey you know what part of my character uh, should i work on today right mm. um you know can i be more honest can i be more uh, you know, uh, courageous or whatever it may be, right? Can I love people better or whatever, right? You know, why, why would we want to make that a priority? Because this is where the greatest value add can be made, right, on a daily basis, right? Do you know what I mean? The better you become, the more value add you can bring. And that's why fundamentally, um, you know, in the education sector, Daniel is right, right, that this is, this is the most important profession. It's meant to be the most impro proper, important profession, profession mm. because you're influencing a whole generation here, right? And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's really, um, uh, it's a mission. It's not a job, right? It's actually people going into the education world, right? they should be primarily driven by the mindset that I'm on a mission, right, mm. to influence this whole new generation to make the nation better. But how do we ensure that that person, because this person could actually believe that they're on a mission yeah. to change, yeah. right? Mm. But what they are changing is they're changing from the good to bad. Yes. Are we all in agreement what good character is all about? Today, if you went to all those hundreds of thousands of teachers and you went to the teacher service commission and look at can you say that we have 60 percent teachers of good character and 40 percent teachers of bad character we, how do we define this character we're we talking don't even about? discuss that we talk about the level of education are they s1 p1 are they uh, graduate teachers yeah. are they science teachers yeah. are they uh, that's how we describe right. our teachers because we can yes. because this other character thing we cannot define it well, you know, th this is where we need, like, literally massive new types of professional development, right? Mm -hmm. For our existing continuous professional development for, for our existing educators and teachers and professors, right? In the TVETs and the, and the universities as well, right? Um, and that's what we're doing today, right? We're, this is professional development, a mm -hmm. new type of professional development focusing on the essence of transformation. So we need more conversations 
more stakeholders who are talking about this. We're talking about this on the radio and TV today. This is really an important conversation. So we need to amplify and echo this more and more and more accelerated actually. We need more people talking about this and working on it. Okay. One would assume that the conversations that are being had with the teachers, the practitioners, the mm. ones who are in the classroom, on the beat, yeah. teaching these children, imbibing all of this, what do they say? I, I, I'm curious as to hear what they say. Do they feel when they're teaching, they say, actually, you know what? I need to be rewired. I am at the point whereby I realize that if overall my education, uh, yeah. Yeah. my wires are non-existent, <laughs> yeah. or there's a yellow one instead of a green one, right? Yes. Do they admit, do they feel that it is necessary to have a fundamental foundational shift if we're going to deliver this education? Because if they don't, mm. then we can... It's a, we can be talking about it's, something it's, else. It's very critical. Yeah. And that's why I think we are talking about training here. Teacher yeah. training should be redefined. Mm. How we train these teachers, I think the issues of character, issues of background checks, you know, needs to be, you know, to look, re looked at so that you are sure that you don't have a teacher who has, for example, mental health issues eh, mm. in the classroom who is going to, you know, just maybe just blow up or something. So, um, and uh, I also know that uh, when we started, for example, CBC, the issue came up of retraining these teachers, and it was really a really big issue. Um, and this is something that needs to be uh, relooked at. The, 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 the T Teacher Service Commission mm. should mm. have continuous training, uh, rewiring, so-called, of these teachers. My argument yes. today is that these things happen. Yes. Even before you get to teacher training. Yes. In school, in basic education, you, you, your character is being shaped. And that's why there's levels of div different degrees and levels of punishment. Mm -hmm. uh, to a point where, yes, you are even suspended. Go home. Come with the parents so we can correct because this, you, your character is getting offline. Mm -hmm. In employment, there are all these assessments. If, for example, a community says sees a teacher who is continuously turning up to school drunk mm -hmm. okay. uh, action is taken if it's a teacher who is corrupt is teachers who are involved in impregnating their students action is taken mm. so when we say we need to reshift how we train our teachers that, what exactly are we saying uh, how can we even put up a, a curriculum that says this is what good character is you shall what smile I, three times a day. I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know, but but I think the system is there. Mm. Um, the system is there, and uh, I, I can tell you for free that there are really very good teachers in this country. Very good teachers. Mm. Some are in private schools. Some are in public schools. Transformational teachers, you know. And uh, I think that some of these very good teachers, maybe they are forty percent or fifty percent can be the model that helps also to redefine and also self-regulate the teaching profession. I have been, I mean, I know in this country we have, uh, uh, for example, the unions have been on the forefront of advocating for teachers' uh, rights, yep. you know. Mm -hmm. But I've been calling for that, uh, uh, you know, rather than having the unions uh, the call, uh, you know, calling for the rights of these teachers, uh, can we have uh, uh, something like the teachers, uh, uh, like the Law Society of Kenya, like the Teacher Society of Kenya, that not just looking for the rights, but also are continually self-regulating the profession, mm -hmm. continually uh, coming up with the best practices that can be used to train these teachers. Can so be, like can, we have can East award. Park, yes, so like East of Park. Engineers, yes, so we, we need that. Not just right. NAT and Coupet. These are just calling for salary increase. But we need pro to professionally develop these teachers. And it is high time teachers of Kenya come up with the Teacher Society of Kenya, like LSK, ISPAC, you know, to have self-regulation, have self-development, so that this profession can, again, um, uh, be rewired and can be made, uh, you know, uh, great again, like they would say in America. Yeah, I think, um, you know, you're talking about the rewiring, right? And um, yeah, this, this is where, you know, ideally, right, any teacher will have the honest self-awareness, right, on a daily basis. Hey, you know, this is my self-assessment where I'm at today. I need to work on these, this one thing today or this week. I need to work on something else next week. 
because I want to keep improving myself. I want to sh keep showing up as that better version of myself, right? And in order to trigger that, we need new types of interventions, right? New types of, um, you know, training, capacity building. So that's what we're striving to do in Global Peace Foundation, even with our Transforming Education Summit today. This is not a, like a regular summit on education. We're actually zeroing in on the essentials, on the foundations, right, of where we want to be going here. So we need lots and lots and lots of new types of capacity building. You know, you know the phrase, right, you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Mm. Mm. I don't believe that. I believe an old dog can learn new tricks, right? With the right kind of, an, uh, of an intervention. And the right also kind of tricks. Incentives. The right, yeah, <laughs> incentives and so on, right? And, you know, aspiration even. It's like, you know, it's stimulating their aspiration. I can make a significant difference. Mm. Maybe I didn't do great so far, right? But, hey, I've got X number of years left. I can do something amazing, right? Yeah. And that person can make a new decision, right? right? So, you know, if we, we believe this, right, you know what I mean, um, you know, it's, it's a belie believing in that humanity can be them be can their best selves. We keep bettering ourselves. We keep be yeah, exactly. Like growing, developing. Which is what today's uh, summit is all about. That's what it's all about. Transforming Education Summit. Where is it? At KCC? At the Panari, just, a, just at here. At the Panari. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Down Mombasa Road. Yeah, yeah Mombasa mm. Road. Okay. Yeah. Um, bringing in all stakeholders in the education sector. Yes. And well wishes. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us this morning, gentlemen. Thank You're you welcome. for having us. Yeah, Thank for you for good having conversation us. conversation and good debate. We need to have it. And I think that I like that idea, Institute of Teachers of Kenya. Awesome. You, yes. you get PD points to become, to rise up. Yeah. To, to the, the next principle. level. Okay. Yeah. Daniel Juma is the Executive Director of Global Peace Foundation Kenya. And Dr. Tony Devine is the International Vice President for Education at the Global Peace Foundation USA. 9 a.m. Time for the news. Good morning, this is Newsworm Dennis Aseto. The police have been deployed to Mapembeni area in Mui Avenue, Mombasa to get against the protest by civil society groups against the implementation of the 2023 Finance Act. This is after security agencies banned and made sure that the protest would not go on as planned today. However, civil society organizations have expressed their displeasure with the decision saying that they will still protest the protest has been scheduled from that area to treasury square where they aim to present their complaints and petitions to the mombasa county commissioner my appeal to mombasa resident to toke kwa wingi hivi vita via high cost of living si via wanarakati peke yake sio via wanasiasa peke yake ni kwetu sisi sote maisha yamekuwa magumu bei ya unga imekuwa juu bei ya ugali imekuwa juu bei ya kila kitu imekuwa juu na ni jukumu la serikali ku make sure bei ya vitu bei ya necessary commodities imeshuka chini kwa kuweka mikakati ya kushikisha hizo vitu chini lakini si kuongeza ushuru ushuru should be none of the priority wakati anataka cost of living up in Chia, Kenya. In Nairobi, the protests are expected to start any day now with the position saying that all is ready. They will be holding a rally at Kamukunji Grounds. We will be following these for you and we will be bringing you the very latest in a subsequent news bulletin. Now, Eldoret police are holding two suspects over the death of a woman whose body was found in an Eldoret lodging. Among the two arrested is a 35-year-old woman. The deceased is believed to have spent a night with the suspects at the lodging after a drinking spree together in one of the entertainment joints. It is believed that one of the suspects who works as a night guard in Eldoret town and was off duty, booked a room at the facility located along the Eldoret Webui Highway. Tarbo Sub County Police Commander Chris Osonga confirmed the arrest, saying the two, a man and a woman, are being held at the Central Police Station. Now, Kenya is targeting to establish large scale and outgrowth schemes in eight counties for the production of palm oil, sunflower oil, and soybeans in collaboration with Indonesia. Investments, Trade and Industry Cabinet Secretary Moses Kuria says the partnership 
partnership with the world's largest edible oil producer will help Kenya attain edible oil sufficiency and cut the huge import bill the commodity attracts. In a statement, Korea said a delegation of leading Indonesian government and private firms is expected to meet President William Ruto and other members of the executive for a joint discussion on full development of the edible oil industry, which it says is currently being controlled by five companies, however, according to the edible oil manufacturing subsector players under the umbrella of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, the price increment have largely been due to movement in international prices. A family in Tausa area of Taita Taveta County has sent out a distress call to help trace their daughter who went missing Wednesday. The 16-year-old girl Matilda Mwake Mwanjala from Mwasete High School in Motate constituency is believed to have disappeared from school after a short midterm break. The student is alleged to have left home at around 5 a.m. and arrived at school safely with her classmates asserting that Tuesday she was among those who had breakfast in the school before she disappeared. Appeared. If Matilda is listening to us, your parents are looking for you. This school is also looking to you. If you also have any information, report to the nearest police station. Now, the development of artificial intelligence or AI for the good of all requires guardrails grounded in human rights, transparency and accountability. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres stressed that AI must benefit everyone, including the third of humanity who are still offline, and insisted on the need to urgently find consensus on what the guiding norms for AI deployment should be. The UN chief was speaking at the AI for Good Global Summit organized in Geneva by the International Telecommunication Union, bringing together government, civil society, UN agencies, AI innovators and investors. The event is exploring ways in which AI can be used to help the world achieve the sustainable development goals. Now, Kenya is facing 79% climate change financing gap amidst increasing global warming effects that are causing havoc in developing countries. The African Center for Technology Studies Climate Change Program lead Dr. Joel Oyango stated that the situation is headed to a worse state if nothing is done to finance adaptation to climate change effects. He said many Kenyans have little security against intense climate effects. They have few resources reserves, poor housing and depend on natural resources for their living. This is News I'm Dennis Aceto. Good morning. Ninety four point four Spice FM Nairobi. Not much going on with traffic this morning. Uh, it looks pretty good. You're getting where you're going in a real, um, a fast way in the real world. Okay, Sawa. Um, coming off Thicker Super Highway, no traffic. Langata Road, no traffic. Jogo Road, just a little bit of traffic. Thicker Super Highway, did I say no traffic? Southern, Northern, Eastern Bypass, no what? No traffic. No Ahala, no problem. Just come and be going. You'll be fine. What happened? No traffic. What? That there's no traffic. Sini Saba Saba. People are all going all over the country. Instead of on the road. To Sab Sab. Ah, Basi. Yeah. Spice FM KE. Nice. Even Edna has come. Ah, no very traffic. Good. <laughs> Saba. <laughs> This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room, tell us about the only way to... Okay, uh. now... Let's you just understand. Eh? All right. 
There's a girl called Esther. Esther. All right. Write mm. it down. Mm-hmm. She's a waitress. Mm-hmm. She serves drinks, food, things like that. Mm. Now, she in the somewhere in the restaurant, mm. she runs into some proceeds. What they're calling proceeds from a crime or robbery. She doesn't know it's proceeds. Is it written proceeds? Of, not, she just runs okay. into what's it? Is it money, gold, money, diamond, money, money, money. 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 She finds some cash. She finds some cash. And stashed she somewhere. <laughs> jackpot. See, Mimi na jackpot. To same Copa Moja. Group. Mm-hmm. Then she finds out that there's a guy called Benja, mm. who is the mastermind of this crime that brought about this money. Okay. Now, you know what? Mm. Benja is her brother. Younger or bigger? <laughs> Benja is her brother. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Now, mm. a guy called Cain. Cain. Like Cain and Abel. Okay. Now, Cain... He's a criminal. He was also involved in this crime. Okay. That brought about this money. Okay. But now that money happens to be part of the money that he did what? He lost. Cain, follow me so far. Cain lost money. Cain lost money in this heist that brought about this money that Esther found. Which means that Benja played him. Benja played Cain. Oh. Or somebody played Cain. And Cain is not the guy you just play with anyhow. Mm-hmm. Cain is one of those guys, you take my money, I kill you, kind of thing. Okay. Now, he wants to find out where is his money, mm. who is holding it, and mm. who was truly responsible for making the money disappear. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, surely, if the money is found with Benja's sister, is Cain stupid? Is Cain stupid is the question. Wait, it gets better. Uh. See, now Esther mm. has friends in church, Ruth, Hope, and Deborah. Okay. Now, they have seen this money. They are church girls. Esther didn't zip. She went and told, her, and told her friends. That Not only told. That, ma- that, money. that money was even. <laughs> <laughs> now, the question is, Sasa, do we use this money and become rich, the four of us? Or, do we behave ourselves like church girls and now say, where did we find this money? So <laughs> Esther's friends have Englished themselves into this money. It has become their money. Our money. She found the money. But yeah. because we are church girls and we're <laughs> talking <laughs> to each other, eh? we go and tell them, hey, sister. Yes, the person who came across that money eh. is Esther. It's not Esther. It's, it's Esther. Esther. Then she went and told her friends. Oh, it's a it's one child, of the friends. A child. Oh, it's a baby. It's a child. A young, chi- a young child first. It's of one who opened right. the bag. Opened the bag and saw. Then Esther comes into the scene and finds the child and the and bag. Then, and then you know there's this thing. And then now and then she goes and tells her friends, guys. Her war council. Mm. Yes. Ah. Do you see now? Right. So now they're confused. Sasa <laughs> hipesa <laughs> tutumia. Hipesa yetu. That's imagine all those things are happening in what episode one. Pesa ya kuokota. As in, you find money in a bag and becomes pesa yako. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's our yetu. money. See, we don't about it. You embrace it. It's communal now. Sit my pata. Ni yetu. Ownership instant. We but didn't it, work for it. We no, were, it's not no, payment no, for no. something. We just came across money. It's our money. The thing I really liked about that episode, yeah. they actually capture the Kenyan spirit and attitude towards money. They Here capture we it so well. Uh-huh. Huh? Because at some level, you think it's confusion. Mm. Okay? Mm. But what you see is conflict. What you really want to do with the money, and then there's this faith getting in the way of yeah. it. <laughs> Literal faith. <laughs> really? Faith is a person. It's, it's, it's getting in the way of it. <laughs> you, there's, you, then to try and resolve it now, do a church, you it's know. Try and justify it. Yeah, what, what if we we, we to twice a duck? A, Kid, yeah, a no, 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 you see. And then it, it, but, it cleans the money. Precisely, precisely, <laughs> precisely. <laughs> you want to know what's going to happen next? You need to log on to showmax.com. Will you? Well, better get strapped in and enter a world where the unexpected happens. The twist of church adherents getting involved in crime is what it's being called. Mm. Imagine all these things happen in episode one. What is going to happen in episode two? It's a weekly unfurling of the episodes of Showmax's latest original title, Faithless. Kabeza City. Mm. The final proverb from Libya. The final for, proverb from Libya. At least for the month of July. At least for the month of July. Are mm-hmm. we doing nothing today? In fact, by the time we come back to Libya... <laughs> Repeat everything. No, by the time we come back to Libya, it'll be next year. Mm. Ah, okay. All yes. right. No, mm. The other countries in Africa. Sour. 54 of them. So okay. by the time we do that round, Libya next be year. Yes. Okay. He who is to be hanged 
can. This is you're being given advice. You can insult the pasha. Mm. Please go ahead. <laughs> you go ahead. No, you're good. going to be hanged anyway. And the worst <laughs> that the pasha could do was just hang you. <laughs> so you just insult the <clears throat> and tell him what you think of him and tell him to go and again. <clears throat> tell him to go <clears throat> hang. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, if he doesn't a, understand a, fully, mm. let me to observe what's show happening him. to you. Show him. <laughs> See how you do it. Example. <laughs> 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 hey, Saba Saba. So Saba Saba has been a big uh, deal in Kenya for um, at least the last 30 years, right? In the push and clamor for multi-partyism. And Saba Saba rallies, those ones were Kina Martin Chikuku, the late uh, uh, Masinde Muliro, uh, and, and Kina James Orengo, and then the seven bearded sisters uh, coming together for Saba Saba rallies uh, at Kamukunji grounds. Remember, two years ago, we spoke to uh, what was his name? Jeru Katango. Mm-hmm. Jeru Katango, who was among Tumishi, Tumishi Jeru Katango, who was among those who organized the 1992 Saba Saba rally. And you're saying this one had to be strategic. We could not just do it at the at Kamukunji alone because Nyayo would have come at, more used to be called Nyayo. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Too shame is here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nyayo. Nyayo would have come and just arrested all of us. <laughs> and kill the whole thing. So we had to make sure that Saba Saba rallies happen across the country. The people were gathering in all towns. So when Nyayo looks, he wonders, hey, yeah, the entire country. Saba Saba. Uh, uh, this time, the opposition leadership of Azimio La Umoja, Kenya Kwanza, is saying, you know what, because of this cost of living, because of the, the Finance Act of 2023 and the taxation measures that have been imposed because of everything else in this government, let us go to Saba Saba across the country so we can send a message. Okay. Puna mefanya nini? Mm-hmm. Puna mechoka. Sasawa. Puna mechoka. If you look at the pictures that were taken on that Saba Saba, Orengo mm. Shikuku, they were in some rickety, rickety pickup. Mm, those pigeots. Pigeot. Mm. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what it's written, Pidgeot. Mm. If you go around pronouncing it, Pidgeot. It's like it's Pidgeot. You know, sometimes, yeah, sitting in front of a mic and talking to the mic and preferring your thoughts on a subject mm. is a really simple thing. Mm. Because you have the latitude to theorize. And I was theorizing this morning, mm. those early times when other people are asleep and we are wide awake. I was saying, what would happen if the president decided to attend the rally? <laughs> <laughs> if Ruto went to Kamukunji today? Well, yeah, it's a Saba day. Mm. After all, it's for everybody. Yes, and even he wants to protest this high, high cost. High cost. <laughs> because it's also affecting <laughs> And you also protest about the finance. Well, yeah, and you also have to be given opportunity to say, I side with my brother Raila here. Mm. This cost of New Year's has gone, it's gone too high. Mm. Where's the Minister for Finance and the Minister for Agriculture? Parliament passed it and they passed brought it to me. Yeah. Can they come, and tell, no us how, yeah. they come and tell us how these things are, have taken place? Mm. <laughs> Explain to us. <laughs> when I, I am I, for the people. I actually, when you voted me, I intended to do these things. That's why I'm here today, because mm. I support Raila on this particular matter. <laughs> <laughs> These prices are too high. Yeah, too high. <laughs> and I'm with you, the people. I'm actually with you, the people. <laughs> it would be a nice one. It would be very... No, what do you think would happen? Then he, he then says, Raila, I think we, we need to march and go to the CBD. <laughs> Let's go to State House. <laughs> you know, he'd actually throw that meeting into complete... Confusion. And total confusion and disarray. People would be... So now, right? <laughs> what do we do? So first of all, Raila would just look at him and not do much. Everybody else, Kina Ola Aladwa, Kina Sifuna, would be looking at Raila and wondering, so Raila, what do you want us to do? So, <laughs> this guy's here. Know, <laughs> <laughs> this 
this guy is here and he has not come at in those motorcades no mm-hmm. oh, he's come mm-hmm. like the what mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that car he used to drive when he first that came uh, 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 that m n k b m m p for eldred mm. was it north mm. uh, that one, that mm. one. Uh, something similar that's what he comes with shows uh, up not these lexuses and around 50 cars following it ah uh-uh. ah you show up so saba saba will acquire completely new meaning <laughs> and the opportunity for the president to show that you know i also understand these things mm. <laughs> mm. throw a few of his people under the bus mm. while he at it mm. and throw them nicely mm. see these are the problems of being a president you give people the jobs and you think they're going to do a good job and then, and, and then here we are that would actually be a master stroke of intelligence because what you do is that you put yourself in the same boat as everybody else and say look we're in this thing together literally all of us i'm looking for leadership so you've been shouting all this time how about you give me some direction mm. master stroke because now you point your fingers at him all the time and his mm. pomman put himself with you the rest of the crew and say okay eh and and with every statement he decided with Raila mm. yeah in fact if you look at Raila's his and things been saying he's been saying this thing all along and I, 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 I I'm he's here right. to say that he's right then 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 he can break into song yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he can say anything he wants after that because you've now shown him that he's on your side. Yes. Okay. And as long as the song is, is not can we jenga inchi, it should be fine. Yes. It can be whatever song, song but not can we. But bado mapamba no. Ama kimeturamba. Yes. Sio kao. Kimeturamba. 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 Yikes. Ah, <laughs> uh, that would be a big one. Well. Azimia used hopes to use Sabasaba as a springboard to push back against Kenya Kwanza. They will launch a collection of signatures to reject Kenya Kwanza. The coalition is calling on its supporters to embrace tax boycotts and there will be a major rally to be held in Kamukunji, Nairobi. Ah. Eh. Uh-huh. You know there's a whole issue of rejecting tax boycotts i, I mean of embracing tax boycotts hmm. let me tell you <laughs> if the president embraces that as well you you, you see the, the thing about politics people keep saying it's a game of numbers mm. yes and no really you see when you say numbers what <clears throat> numbers are you referring to here mm. okay there those who call it a chess game perhaps you get closer to it that is if you understand chess and how it's played i don't for instance so i never give any analogy of chess because i don't understand the chess game but there are times when you look at a situation and you feel it doesn't matter who would have been president at this time these matters that we're dealing with would remain a constant if kibaki were to come alive and was president today we would have the same issues If Moi were alive, we would have the same issues. If we had to give Uru another five years, it would be the same issues. If Raila Odinga's president, we would have the same issues. Same. Now, where does the difference come in? Is it in the way you manage these issues? Is it in the people you appoint to help you manage these issues? Is it in the length of time and effort and detail you take in ensuring that you pull the people along with you not as you say but as you say and then as you do you walk with them so <clears throat> there's visibility of this walk even if it's just half a step but the, it is seen what is it because there is this conversation that members of UDA whom we've had in the street telling us about or oh, there's a global problem <laughs> so what I'm a Kenyan. I don't really care about the global problem. Not really. Even when you tell me that it's affecting me, I hear what you're saying, but I'm thinking I get that. So don't tell me what I know. Tell me how it is you as my leader is going to help me resolve this problem that I'm dealing with on a daily basis. That's really what I'm interested in. What's happening in the rest of the world? That's just information. Mm. Do you think though then that these kind of protests because look, the kind of protest that we see or even if it's coming out and lobbying and picketing, look, there's a case to be made for lobbying and picketing. We've seen that we've seen results that have come from lobbying and picketing in many parts of the world, right? In this particular case where we are today, do you think that there would be some kind of effect that would be felt on the current <clears throat> issues that are being faced today in Kenya? Yeah. Okay. So now 
this is going to happen today there will be a rally there will be protests mm. we've seen we've heard that there will be there are promises that it will continue in the future will it bring about and this has been the perennial question will it bring about is there enough reserve is there enough um <coughs> conviction <laughs> to follow through that would insist on some kind of change conviction it, where on the part of the people who are Organizing the picketing, lobbying. Okay. To say that come rain, come shine, mm. come whatever. We are going to be here until something happens. There are people, I think, who turn up for these rallies and demos and all convinced that they are actually leading to something. There mm. are people who do that. There are people who get up and they decide, yes, today I'm gonna to spend my day on this or if I'm, for one reason or the other, unable to follow it, I'm supporting it uh, in spirit. But I think that many of the organizers of these things are not interested in a result, the result that they talk about. They're interested in a different result that they don't talk about. This is all management of people. If you look at the number of what do you call them? Demos, meetings, uh, public consultations, and all those things that have been in the country. From the beginning of this year, we will do public demonstrations and engagement across the country. So we are going, we are going to Kitale, we are going out to Kisumu, we are going to Mombasa, we are going to... Do you see a build-up of what we discussed last month is what we are still discussing today, and there's then a progress... <laughs> in a certain direction there's none it's always about just spinning us spinning us spinning people and then you're left confused and they move to something else this call for today's demonstration the organizers of it are saying we're going to demonstrate today so we can talk about the pub the boycott of taxes for example yeah we saw what they were how they described the boycott of taxes what is boycott of taxes do not board a matatu. Do not use your vehicle. So do not fuel. So by not fueling, then you're not paying that the increase money. in tax. Yeah. But they are using vehicles. To get to where they're going. These people will drive to Kamukunji. And these vehicles are not small vehicles. Huh? They're not. Mm. They're the perennial guzzler. Yeah, no one is going to Kamukunji in these matchbox type vehicles. Or that, even on a uh, thing, yes. a moped. Mm. Nope, no, mm. nope, no. These electrical bicycles, no? No. No, <coughs> it's, ga it's guzzlers. Yeah. They talk about using matatus. So yes, we'll use matatus, but we'll, f you know, fill up to beyond capacity. How is that a tax boycott? You know, if and as long as nobody has said this is how the tax boycott will work, then there's no this whole issue of tax boycott is just smoke screen. As long as you're saying that uh, we shall meet in Kamukunji on Sabasaba, the last time we met was on a Tuesday, this time we're meeting on a Friday, the next one we shall tell you when we shall meet. So there's no clarity of the what next. We are in st stage one, level one. How shall we get to level seven? You know, after we unlock level two, we unlock level three, we then go to... If there's no clear procession from level one to level seven, it's all a smoke screen. And I think my personal conspiracy theory is that the leadership of Azimio and the leadership of Kenya Kwanza are all both managing us so that there is no emergence of a third force of leadership that will occupy a vacuum. Were these guys not doing Saba Saba, there would have been somebody else who could come out and say, let's do Saba Saba. Mm. And what would that mean if there was a new leader or a new grouping or a new conversation Actually, that take, tells people, let's go, even if it's not to Kamukunji, let's do something on Saba Saba. You know the point you make, even if it's just a philosophical one, mm. has a lot of weight. For this very simple reason, if indeed there is a leadership that is spearheading a protest, a complaint, voicing the disgruntlement that people are feeling and talking about the issues that people have, there is leadership in that conversation. Mm. If it isn't there and it gets organic and it takes on a life of its own, then the control factor is removed Out. completely. 
So now, the government can control it, opposition can control it. Mm. And then, new, as you say correctly, new leaders will emerge. <coughs> new ideas. New ideas will come. Yeah. And Out ideas of control. Are, yes, uh, ideas are carried by people. So, when this new thing comes along, then suddenly, that this entire conversation we're having here changes completely. Mm. Because, you know, this work we do, mm. when you talk to people about what's happening in the country. As I said, I travel by Uber every single day to and from work. And the things I hear and I'm told, and every once in a while in the evening when there's much traffic, I'll take a motorbike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the conversation is like it's choreographed and it is not. These people don't know each other. They even explain to you. Someone will say, you know, most people say Nimbaya. When you ask, they those who tell you, you see, clients have to have money to look for our services. But sometimes, even now, we're having to choose the business we take because of the fuel factor. Because mm. you don't want to get stranded in the middle of the road because you look at where you're going to get the business. And then, for instance, our app doesn't tell us where you're going. Mm. So I travel seven kilometers so that I can take someone two kilometers. Said it's not helpful to me. <laughs> yeah. So I'd rather not. Mm. And then they say, and now there are very many Uber vehicles. Mm. Right. And then you do the maths. As I told you, one of my Uber guys told me how he did his maths for one trip and he ended up with 23 bob. Mm. And he says, you know, you, you know, you know I, maybe not be worth it. It might actually be better if I just park the car. Mm. Okay. All I'm saying is when people in their own way are explaining to you how exactly they are feeling. See? But then I also sense. It isn't the first time we've had fuel hikes. This is probably the highest we've had. But it's not that we haven't had fuel hikes before. Mm. We have. But it's not fuel hikes in isolation. Mm. It's many other things. And also, the subsequent effects of, the, of our fuel hike and what it also brings into being. But the thing that caught my attention is when they say, you know, the clients are no longer using our services we get the impression that more people are either using motorbikes, and when I talk to the motorbike people, their situation is not very, very different. Mm. Now, imagine somebody who sells wares. Yeah. Their story is the same. You go to the shop and say, why is this shop seeming... He said, well, people aren't coming as they used to. Mm. And when people come in, they take less than they used to. Mm. Okay? So, the austerity measures that were spoken of are upon us. And people are being forced to impose that austerity on their lives, given the reality that they're facing on a daily basis. You expect there to be huge jams now that children are back in school. Those huge jams are not there. No, they aren't. They're actually not there. So, everything about this situation, yes, the demonstration is a loud enough shout about the problem. But... Surely, this opportunity to say what you would do as the opposition, is it that we are misunderstanding this conversation or is it that it's not important? And if it isn't, then it, what Eric is saying then m m makes a lot of sense. It's just being economical with the truth. <coughs> Yesterday, the controller of budget was here telling us about things that happened in the previous administration that are continuing to happen even now in this administration. Yes. One ton borrowing, accumulation of debt, and misappropriation of that debt okay mm. it's not that it's happening without the knowledge of the top leadership in kenya kwanza no, no, and the no, top no. leadership in azimio it's it's happening with their but knowledge. do you hear azimio for example talking about debt no and the mismanagement of debt in the last nine years no or this mismanagement of debt in the last nine months no they will mention the nine months they will not mention the nine years no. They will not mention the role that their own leaders have played in Parliament in approving these budgets and failing to check on the wanton debt accumulation and misappropriation of debt. It's, it's a game. The things that really matter in this country are the things that they will make sure that we do not discuss. We'll talk about everything. It's like, it's like a song. It's like a song with a chorus. You sing the song, then there's a chorus. Mm. You know, 
see, like one of the things that I know in my neck of the woods, mm. what you call Luo Nyanza, there was a, and there has been, mm. there were complaints about the governors in Luo Nyanza, mm. some more than others. And the thing that kept being said mm. was, why don't we hear the party leaders speaking about this? Mm -hmm. Because these governors are not doing the county any good. And then they get two terms and you're thinking, now. How? With the endorsement of. Yes. And the their party, party they are party members. And saying with all this money, our respective counties would have changed tremendously. tremendously. Mm. And we would expect that somebody would call to order and told, excuse me, you better, you, you know, you really do need to do what it is that you're supposed to do. Okay? So, 10 years go by, and the county is not where it could have been. Mm. So, it's almost like a, a lost 10 years as far as the development of that particular county is coming. So, now a new governor comes in, and they're brighter and bushy-tailed, and they understand these things. They seem to be doing a lot of good, but it's because there was nothing or little... Zero. Uh, <clears throat> Very little had been done, so the little that they do is seen and it's acknowledged. But then you acknowledge that they are doing something. See, the accumulation of knowledge about these matters also pile up. So when those in the opposition and someone in their own backyard is not seen to point fingers at things which are wrong, Somebody will not say it loudly, but they'll say, but you point at things which are wrong in the, at the national level. What about in your own backyard mm, yeah. when we have these governors? In place. And they are your party governors. Why are they not being called to order to all, excuse me, this man is meant for this one, ain't she? How mm -hmm. come it's not doing what it's supposed to do? Mm. And if that conversation is had in private, then how come you don't see the, the change that should follow such a reprimand? It's part of a bigger game. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We are being managed. 26 minutes to 10. Let's take a, this break. Tell us about the weather. Where? It's still dark out there. Yeah, imagine. Today is like that weather for... Ch -ch 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 -ch. It is that day for... Like that. Until night. It's like night. It is. It's like 6 in the evening. Mm. <laughs> Tell us about it. Mm. Let's take a break. We'll be back shortly. And then we'll open the phone lines to hear from you. 0719-012-600 on this sub sub day. Do you support the sub sub the Saba Saba demonstrations. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. It's that time again when we get to gather around and marvel at the great engineering, raw power, finesse, and share in our round motor love for motoring at the annual Digger Motor Show 2023. From car lovers, bike enthusiasts, spare part dealers, insurance, as well as asset financers and more, this year's Digger Motor Show will be one for the books. We're talking a whole four-day event from Thursday 20th to Sunday 23rd at KICC Grounds, Nairobi, where we will have something for everyone, so you better not miss out. Get the family, bring your friends, and share in the joys that will give you lasting memories and an experience you're bound to not forget. For more information or participation, contact Caroline on 0723 or email senyandiaka at standardmedia.co.ke Digger Motor Show 2023 is brought to you by Standard Group and Digger Motors and is powered by Spice FM When the engine revs, will you be ready to get all that petrol head enthusiasm at this year's annual Digger Motor Show? Well, you better belt up and make your way to KICC from the 20th to the 23rd of July, 2023 for our wholesome four-day event. Come and join car lovers, bike enthusiasts, spare part dealers, insurance as well as asset financers and more for what will be an unforgettable experience by far. We are going all out to make it a great show for you and the whole family with something for everyone. So, you better not miss out. For more information or participation, contact Caroline on 072. 3803601 or email sinyandiaka at standardmedia.co.ke Digger Motor Show 2023 is brought to you by Standard Group and Digger Motor Cloudy and a bit of sprinkle in Nairobi at 13, highs of 17 and lows of 11. It's partly sunny at 17 in Nakuru, highs of 22 and lows of 12. 12 will be the low in a partly sunny area at 13. Going to highs of 17, 21 will be the high in a cloudy Eldoret at 17. It's 26 and cloudy in Mombasa, highs of 28 and lows of 22 and OC lows of 24. In a cloudy Malindi at 26, going to highs of 28. 
It's mostly cloudy at 21 in Kisumu, highs of 27 and 26. We'll be behind a mostly cloudy El uh, Kakamega at 20 currently. It's cloudy at 21 in Kampala, highs of 24. 28 will be the high in a sunny Dar es Salaam at 26. It's 10 degrees and sunny in Johannesburg, highs of 17. And we'll see highs of 30 in a heavy rainy Lagos at 25. It's 23 and sunny in Kinshasa, highs of 33. And lows of 21, 36 degrees and sunny Friday evening in Beijing, highs of 37. And we'll see highs of 32 in a sunny Paris already early this morning. Sunny at 16 in London and partly cloudy at 24 in New York coming into Friday. We'll see highs of 30 and lows of 23. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Yeah, we don't have a traffic problem today. Um, most folks out, uh, rather in or somewhere, because they're not on the roads, that's for sure. Uh, where the usual suspects would be lying right about now, everybody seems to be lying low. Um, we're not going to have an issue coming off the Vicar Superhighway. You'll be into the city without a problem whatsoever. Gong Road looks pretty good. And we're also seeing very smooth movement of traffic in and out of the CBD coming out of Westlands. And um, North Airport Road, which usually would be an issue right about now, is free. It's clear. It's going all the way through to the Eastern Bypass, touching on Outer Ring. And it'll come into the CBD free and clear as well. All right. Traffic hour ended early today. Didn't really get off to a start, that's for sure. Through the morning, let's talk on Spice FM KE on Twitter. up your life. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94 have you point gone to Naivas. Have you bought Colgate? Please do. Because of YCT? Because when you buy a mm. tube of Colgate, you do more than just buying toothpaste. You are contributing to make the lives of very many Kenyans so much better. Not just Kenyans, young Kenyans of school going age. Because the buying of that tube enables you to contribute to the building of wells. Mm. Colgate has purpose to build 150 of these wells around the country in places that they are needed. And this will make it possible for those in those areas to get clean, safe water. And with it will come the health benefits. Mm. With it will come <clears throat> the possibility of time that is usually consumed by children in fetching water from long distances. It will be a game changer and a life changer for ah, many. And that is what you'll be doing. Beautiful. You'll be a partner in that process. Very good. Okay, very good, Sana. You're very Nisana. good. Nisana. Ah, you're very good, Nisana. So, did you see Mark Masai yesterday on Faithless? You know, oh, that's you, just you, 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 need to, you need to forgive me. Yeah. I haven't quite known these characters by name. Oh. Now, that's what I'm going to do on the weekend. Okay. Yes, I'm going to say, okay, who you endure. You'll uh -huh. know them by name. Who you endure. By their uh -huh. names, you shall know them. Yes, mm. I, that's what I'm going to take time. Mm. See? Okay. Yes. He stars. Mike Masai features. As a news anchor, yeah. surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Faithless. Yes. Yeah. So the question is, will they use the money or for good or succumb to the temptations that come with ill-gotten wealth? That's the underlying question on Showmax's latest original title, Faithless. And that premiered yesterday. And we're enjoying all the intrigues of the first episode, the next one to come next week, Thursday. But the question is, money that was found, shall we keep it? Shall we use it? Who does it belong to who's looking for it who will get caught up in the drama in the process show me well. zero seven one nine zero one two six hundred sub sub day do you support the rally muhammad yes vp good morning sir good morning to you wangwana nyote kwa pamoja salamu alaikum alaikum salam 
bwana nimewamiss kwa siku nyingi kutozungumza na nyinyi niko wapi niko nawasikiza tu maana nimechoka na hiyo concept na hiyo idea niliyokuwa nayo mm. lakini today you made my day mm -hmm. you brought those gentlemen mm. very nice guys yes they really talked nice on character and uh, values mm. for our teachers so that the children right. can get those characters I've been singing the same song but you two are not you are not understanding me because of my kiingereza is very poor no it is not poor mohammed ah pana 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 bwana pana bwana your english is very good i mean ashkuru mwalimu and you Now, communicate very clearly thank you sir thank you be blessed asante <laughs> they really echoed and amplified Mm. The concept I have had for very some time now. Mm. Mm. It's good. It has been understood, and that is the only way out. Very good. Now, the worst pandemic has ever hit humanity. Hiyo mm. mambo character na values. Really? Medically, maybe you can get COVID, any other disease which to do with medicine, medical, the body, the, the, the anatomy of the body, or the anatomy. But the mindset, this has caused all these, specula these tribulations and deaths and wars and climate change and end, end, end to the end. Obisa. Because of values and character. Mm. Now, the thing uh, Madame Ndu was asking that gentleman, what is the solution? Mm. If WHO came just two, three years ago in regard to COVID-19, They used that influence and power without using a single bullet. And they enforced all countries in the world yep. to make sure that they follow that procedure to reduce or minimize the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We have a department with the United Nations, I think it is UNESCO. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who are on education issues yep. globally and culture and culture Let, let's say and culture mm. why can't they use the same medicine or the same bullet which doesn't kill rubber bullet can i call it that way yes to enforce this system of education globally mm. as the way these gentlemen were uh, talking today about mm. and see and and i remember a lot of the other day you asked me how long will it take I told you it could take a generation. Yeah. If I may ask yeah. you now, how long does, you t does it take you or the, the system to produce a lawyer or an engineer or a doctor or any profession you can think of? Mm. How long does it take? It takes at so least it has, it, 25 years. 25. Yeah, let's, let, we have to struggle for 25 years, but make sure uh, in future our kids, our children and grandchildren get this world better than we found it. Mm. You always get this world better than you found it. Mm. This is uh, the idea. I've been trying to talk everywhere, any forum, any uh, space I get. I always preach this same, the same, same uh, song. And finally, mm -hmm. they say, when you lose money, you lose nothing. When you lose health, you lose, you lose something. Yeah. Mm. But when you lose character, my dear friends, mm -hmm. you lose everything. Have a nice day, and uh, I thank you very much for allowing me to, to speak my... Cheers. My my idea or my concept to you. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Mohammed. Same to you. Safi. Zachary. Now, good morning. I had to eat and uh, listen to whatever the the previous caller was saying. Mm. And although you digress, yeah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Now it, it is. It Zachary, is really, really, you digress really all the time. <laughs> yeah. Surely, Now, it's, a, it's, it's a good, useful. Yeah? It's a useful part of conversation. Digression. Uh, sure, 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 sure. So, yeah. uh, How is Massachusetts? Uh, Massachusetts is very cold, giving the uh, freezing temperatures here. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> And the uh, <laughs> temperatures here are, 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 oh my God, I can see cheese, they are trying to run, and, you know, and they are having the umbrellas, yeah? Mm. <laughs> Not a track, eh? yeah, gara, okay? My son, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. This is my point, yeah? Uh-huh. 
Actually, everyone is okay, including Mari Mandro there, is it? We are very well, thank you, sir. <laughs> ah, thank you, sir. Welcome and may God bless you with more and more and more years. Now, yesterday, mm. I listened to the radio, uh, this Nyakango, yeah? Yes. Whatever she is, she is listening, let her know that uh, a certain guy in the, in the, the Toto, no, my Toto, no, no, Massachusetts in the Toto, yeah, South, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, actually liked what she was saying. Mm -hmm. And then he posed a question. To, have, to each and every one of us, yeah? Mm. And she said, do people know the power of the vote that they hold? Mm. During the last campaign time, I mean the previous, they just uh, concluded uh, whatever campaign time, yeah? Mm. Um, I, Mr. Eric, I, I, I don't know, I even took photos and, and videos, yeah? Mm. And the people, people are running and queuing, that they be given special points. Mm. And then the guys would uh, actually follow the, the Safara that was telling them where she knew all the aspirants there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Then I asked someone, Do you really, did you ask that guy a question? Mm. Why he wants to, to be elected, to represent you in, his day, such as in this and that area? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Most of them told me, No, we don't care. As long as he gives us his, uh, uh, our spoils, we really don't care. Yeah? Mm. Now, look, today, these people are now the ones saying that we are going to murder man. So you are doing what? So you are doing what? In the in the in, the, in developed countries, America, the U, uh, Europe, during campaign time, hmm. and I hope we are together. Yeah. It is the electorate who actually put the aspirant to task, and hmm. the, the, uh, most of the conversation uh, revolves around access. Mm. Yes, you have told us that you are going to provide five milk into our houses. <laughs> how? How shall you? Can you can you explain to us? And they listen very carefully. Okay. <laughs> if it is during the 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 Brexit, the Brexit yeah, mm. the guys were actually for the for the for the exit. They mm. were asked very hard questions. Mm. But they, what do we do here? A person comes and tells us that you am going to, to leave to Mama Boga, although now I hear that she has been turned into Mama Boga mm. instead of Mama Boga, okay? Mm. <laughs> Have you heard that? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we do not question. You are telling this woman that you are going to, 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 to build her a better kiosk and you are how, how are you going to do it? For instance, we say that uh, we are having free education. What is free education? Who told people that they are free things or not? Mm. Even when God gives free things, the, the Israelites actually have recorded it to us that they were tasteless. They didn't taste good. Because why God didn't want them to be accustomed to free things. So mm. he just gave them something to, you know, to, hold that the they are, they, they are, to put in the stomach. So let me say this, yeah? Mm. If we want our elders, uh, I mean those who are past 60 like Morim, to have, and I don't know whether Morim has registered himself, to be given to Judas, the man that is stupid, is it? Mm. We want our good roads. Like, you know, I'm starting on a very, very good road. You know, we want the so-called free education. And we want all these things. Where is, are they going to come from? The idea is they are going to come from what I'm going to do today. Yeah. I go and said, and let me tell you these people, Mr. Eric, yeah? Leave alone when they are right. Even when they are dead, they are still going to continue paying taxes. Because when you go into mortuary, those, you require freezing, you require you require you require... You require Yes, had catches to give to those uh, people who will come and we uh, weep mm. and that you have died. So all these things uh, revolve around tax. taxes. So everyone must be sour. Uh, uh, ready to pay tax. And let me say this, yeah? Finally. Uh, uh, finally, as I conclude, mm. the 1990 uh, 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 was the game changer. Mm. The one that we did, that guy, the so-called writer is calling today, is a joke. Mm. And uh, you have a nice day. You too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dominic in Nakuru. Hi, hi, Eric. Hi, how are you? I'm very fine. How are you? Toko salama sana. Thank you very much for calling. Salimia siti na du. Good morning, Sal Dominic. Salamu kwa salamu, Dominic. Yeah, I was listening to the conversation today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, mine is just, 
I think yesterday when you hosted Dr. Margaret, eh? mm-hmm. and I think she gave Kenyans the, the I think she gave Kenyans more reasons why they need to demonstrate. Eh? Mm. Because there's something she was trying to tell you, and I don't know if you picked it very well, but I saw you scribbling some things on your notebook as she was speaking. Mm. <laughs> When she was giving you the inflows and outflows of up to June uh, 30th, eh? Yep. I don't know if you balanced the two sides. You, did you do the math of everything that w- came in and everything that went out? What came in is less than what went out. If, if, if you did the math, eh? Mm. And you look at what she told you as what came in as tax revenues, I think it was about 1.88. Yes. Yes, 886. Yeah, and then uh, what was borrowed, I think it was one about 1.1, 1. 1. 1, I think. 1.058. 1.0158. Yes. Mm. That total comes to about 2.88. Yeah, 2.93. Around yes. 2.9 there. Mm. But then the outflows were? 3.2. Mm. Yeah. So if you if you, if you did that, you realize even even what we are borrowing for, we don't actually need it because we actually borrowing more money than we actually want to use. <coughs> That's true. Yeah. So anyway, these and these these are the problems we, we have. Borrow, we borrow a trillion rate. shillings, and we pay debt of one point one six trillion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. No. Actually, my point is. Mm. We, we actually didn't need to borrow that one trillion. In the first place, because we had yes, it. We had, we, if we were to borrow that, uh, you could have borrowed something like 800. Yeah. <coughs> so why why the excess? Eh? Mm-hmm. Now you in your ship to enter to Kichimba Pole Pole. Mm-hmm. I know Kenya Kwanza keeps saying that you, you stop digging, but they, 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 they dig it every day, every day. And now the problem we are in now, we Nishimo to the other Kuchimba 10 years ago. You can imagine now 10 years from today where we are. What? Yeah. So, I, 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 I so what should we do, Dominic? Mano. What should we do now? Now we, we, have, we have to, now that because the parliamentarians have decided to go rogue on us, mm. I think we just, as much as I don't agree with Baba's uh, method, eh? mm. But right now, he's the one with the political kingdom. Mm-hmm. Eh? He's the one, because other people, other people have, you've seen Kinaeri kuko wa kijaribu kuandamana peke yao, but they never get the, eh? So, we have, to, we have to keep pushing these people from all corners, eh? Tulikimu mm-hmm. kuwangelesha wakifanya finance bill, they ignored us. Mm-hmm. Hmm? Now we are, we, are, we are in court. I think even there, they find their victory kidogo because... I think government with this finance thing, they always find their way. Mm. Yeah, so we we have to keep pushing them. Ata nakuru neza andamana. Ata kwa estate. Yeah, but then it's something I'll 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 it's mahali now we have to now start with it because all other avenues are being blocked slowly by slowly. Yes. And the, that lady, Dr. Margaret, yesterday, I think, she unajua mmekuwa mkisikiza kina umtata na wanjigi, eh? Mm. But yesterday, now you got your confirmation of how public finance are being managed. That's true. Thank you, Dominic. From an insider, from someone who knows everything. Who's, who's supposed to manage. Yes. Thank you, Dominic. Have a lovely day. Yeah, you too. Enjoy your weekend. Okay. okay. Karanja in Naivasha. What I got do, Eric Kina, Modog Victoria, City Muga. We are very well in the, re- in the, in the Riagamuno way. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you have pronounced it, Riagamuno. Mm. Now, <laughs> now, <laughs> Eric. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is the thing now. Yeah. Kuna, there is this song that somebody has sung recently, mm. I think it's some two years go- back. Eh? Mm. Which he says, Tuji angarie, Tuko pabaya kuriko jana, Siki ora kuvahari siki dawa, Tuji angarie. Now, Very good. Look this. Uh-huh. Look this. Uh-huh. 
I remember in Shakura the school, mm. I come across this book called Tubo Risirosiba. Tubo Risirosiba. Yes. I think uh, Marimu City Muga know this book very well. Eh? Mm-hmm. Tubo Risirosiba. Now we are suffering. <laughs> yes, Tubo Risirosiba. <laughs> So, so, uh, I, I think uh, Mwadimu City has come across this book. Eh? He has. Mm. Now this is a problem. Now the Azimio guy has gone to Kamukodi. Uh-huh. The finance bureau already has passed through the, the parliament. Uh-huh. Now, uh-huh. how can you want to abort a child when he's already Been born. about one month to be born? Mm. This is uh, ridiculous. Given the fact that uh, these people, mm. they could have cornered these people. In fact, uh, before they, 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 they get into the power, eh? mm. we had the BBI. Mm. What happened? Mm. Now, watch who Jama Marize. And let these people. Yes, Amarize ended. Let these people do this. Mm. Let's sweep their house. Mm. They put their house in order mm-hmm. so that they can. Corner this person immediately as 2027. But Point what made. they are doing is all, yes, they are shenanigans. They are doing shenanigans. Thank now. you, Karanja. Nothing will let, happen. Let me pick Polycap because you only have about 40 seconds to go. Polycap, hi. Hi. How are you doing? So we have uh, 40 seconds to conclude the show today. Twende. Yeah, I'm calling you from Homer Bay. Yes. I am in total support of the Manda Mano. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though the bill has, has gone through, mm-hmm. but I think uh, our leaders and even us Kenyans yep. need to remind the government from time to time mm. that we are really suffering. Okay. So uh, where, uh, where will I mean, you and uh, from yourself? I'm and the I'm in Home Bay County. Okay. I also wanted to say this, yeah? Mm. We don't have a parliament in Kenya. What do we have? What we have is an extension of the of the executive. Okay. It is like a conveyor belt of conveying whatever the exa- executive has decided, and we are really disappointed in them. Point made. Polycap, thank you very much for calling in, and okay. thank and thank you for following our conversations. Asante sana kilomutu. Today is Sabasaba. It's the final day of this week. We will be back, God willing, on Monday morning. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the scheduled interviews is uh, Martha Karua for Monday morning. Okay, keep it here for that. Enjoy your weekend, people. It's 10 a.m.